<laughs> this doesn't happen very often. Oh, a new a new gaming I guess it? console, yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah. We were using that word, not them though, right? They oh, oh they yeah. said it's the I mean, future a lot of, people of gaming. Are not yes. convinced that being a console. They have sure. a future of gaming announcement. Mm -hmm. It could be like uh don't they have like sticks or whatever, like the chrome stick kind of thing? It's gonna yes. be a stick. Here's yeah. the thing. No, no, no. Here's why not. Here's why not. Here's why not. It's because they have the uh, the historical displays outside GDC of hardware, and then they have the coming soon spot that Google has. There will be some physical object shown off today. Ooh. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. What else are they gonna put in that display, Jones? What display? What are you talking Did about? Did you on that at GDC? They have like little museum like they, glass they, displays. Oh, like the controller. So, okay, at least a, a yeah, controller, yeah, yeah. at least a physical thing, right? right? Yeah, exactly. So we'll have that at least. Oh, you know? yeah, that controller uh, looked like the, the NES Max, the, right. the one that somebody mocked up. Right, <laughs> that was just based off of a uh, uh, patent. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think that um, they'll have a sick controller. Do you think it'll be, let's talk about that controller, because that's, I feel like, the only lock what we have today. Uh, I mean... I don't think that the form factor has anything to do with reality. I think that's just a sketch of like, this, right, is, of this is a controller. People yes. know that this fits in a person's hand. Uh, I, I do not think it will be this like gross thing that will just eat into uh, your palms. This is a good image. Damiana, can we go oh. full screen on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Damiana's is going to show you everybody okay. why, we're, why I'm so positive that we'll there uh, be But, but the Atari next to it, it shows, uh, it doesn't show a system, it just shows a controller. Fair enough, just a controller. It's a box, a poster of E.T.? Mm -hmm. What? It's history, man. <laughs> it's history, man. It's history, man. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Mm -hmm. I saw really... That's like throwing shade, that's like, like low-key shade. I saw somebody on Twitter with a really great comment that they hoped the uh, the new Google Chrome controller had an X button on the right because then we then we've done everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done full. We, we have four current gen controllers with separate X buttons. No, so the GameCube controller has X on the right. Um, it's not this gen. Oh, okay. Well, Kyle, what are, what are you playing Smash on? I, I don't yeah that's a whole different thing. I that's a this gen controller. I, I, dude. I, I started playing Smash Ultimate <laughs> on the regular on the current Switch controller and then switched to a GameCube controller and I'm like, I guess I guess those shoulder buttons feel good. You really click in. I on mean them, I think it's it's a muscle memory thing. I just don't. It, yeah. It's 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 what you're comfortable with, especially the the A you've, button and the Y button. You've always had better muscles than me, Kyle. Always, I've always had better <laughs> muscles than Jones. Uh, <laughs> no. No. Ubisoft okay. is gonna be there, and I mean that's oh yeah. That's what we know already. Uh, Ubisoft well, and Jade Raymond? Whoa. Okay. No, I don't know if those mean anything in particular. Confirm, no, no, no. It's misdirection. Yeah, they're, uh, they're the passwords. It's how the passwords are all Western. Oh, Red Dead confirmed. Wait, so click on the one on the left again? Yeah. Okay, Damiani's on this. There you go. So which one do you want to see? The, the, left. the left one. Here's probably Metal Gear Solid. Uh, that looks like oh, yeah. Splinter Cell. I mean, just stealth. That thing is very I think it's just stealth. It's a genre play. It's I just do. stealth in general. Because you got blocks. Oh, yeah, you got the Metal Gear thing on the end. You got end. bushes from, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've ever picked a lock in Metal Gear. Well, it's stealth. It's like the yeah. stealth screen. Yeah, the bushes. They're playing yeah. genres. Right. Yeah, the Western yeah. genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MGS5, do you pick locks? I guess you do, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I don't know if, like, Metal Gear 1 on NES and MSX has dogs like that. But, like, what other Metal Gear Solid game has dogs? N don't say D-Dog. You know he doesn't look like that. He's not a Doberman chat. Splinter Cell. Yeah, I think it's a general genre thing, as Jones yeah, said. Yeah, zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not go, let's got, let's not go nuts. No wolves! I'm talking dogs! Diamond Dogs logo. Get out and chat. You know that's the, that's five images do not represent Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Um, but that's the thing is, we, like, we don't know much about this event. We know Ubisoft is going to be there. I think id Software is going to be there. That that both those things are happening. Hang on, um, I gotta check on something for Ben real quick. Uh, like if you're scratching your chin wondering what those five zombie symbols mean <laughs> in, as in one particular game, you're scratching the wrong chin, buds. Like it's just a, those two things don't correlate. Um, uh, when this already ran, I think it was last year. 
it was with uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, you were able to what? Well, not this. In Google allowed people to stream Assassin's Creed Odyssey to their laptops or their PCs through Chrome. Through Chrome. Um, and that was just kind of a beta. They said, like, we'll get more to this. Um, the arrow to the knee. Nice. <laughs> uh, we'll come back around to this. There'll be more of this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess that one... But these these are referencing other, like, these make us think of games we've already played. And so, like, I, again, you know, I, I don't know if we should scratch really any chins right now, Kyle, because I think we have no idea what they're about to show, really. But, uh... I, I, that's why I took my bet with you, Kyle, because I, I don't. I think it's going to be the stuff you love easier. Yeah. Get 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 better tools and better access to the stuff you're already playing, on the consoles you already own. You know, it's like if you have like if you have, I, I could even see them even after they're showing off the controller being like you can you can even access this through any controller you want. Like we'll we'll have you know, uh, peripherals. We'll have little you know adapters and stuff that you can get. They're like we want to. I would be very surprised, not only for Google and not only based on like the clues that we've got so far, but for any company in 2019 to come out at the end of this gen and be like, "Here's this brand new system that you should play all these new games on this." You know, like you get there's a ton of buy-in. Yeah, it's a very difficult process to get this working. Yeah, like this is going to be easy, easy, easy. Like this is going to adapt to whatever you're already doing. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, think they want to rock the boat. I think this I works on anything with an internet connection and a screen. Honestly, yeah. Like, yeah. You say future gaming, and it's like, I don't think Google's talking graphics. I don't think Google's talking fr new franchises. I think they're talking about the way you perceive the consumption of games and the way you interact with people through games. Damiani, how reputable is this source? I'm not sure. Don't just throw this out there, dude. <laughs> no, I'm, who, who, who's this? All right. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Damiani Sleuthin. Damiani Sleuthin. We're gonna, we have a live source. sleuth yeah. monitor in front of he's us, gonna, basically. He's going to check his sources. We're not just going to take any random tweets. Right. Yeah, not, I didn't um, know that. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, oh, we should talk more about uh, the rumors that we had when Phil Fer Harrison there joined go. Google, all about Yeti. Uh, I think there's going to be a streamable box, Jones. I think there's going to be a little thing that we can stream to. Yeah, okay. I think it's going to be more than a service that we're about to see and more than a controller. Um, but uh, Kotaku was reporting last night that uh, it would have some crazy features like uh, integrating with Twitch, integrating with watching somebody streaming, uh, where... You can watch somebody who's streaming a single-player game up to a point, which is what Kotaku was talking about. Uh, and you could buy the game and a save file that is loaded up to the point in which you stopped watching that stream. How bonkers is that of an idea? That seems unreasonable. Saving is a pretty intensive process. Yeah. You you need to especially if I, I, I could you can't just save state a modern game I that's can, not yeah. gonna work. I would I would think it would be something more like if there were like a pre order bonus for a game if you watched if you bought the game through someone's stream that was an accredited that was like like signed up through Google or signed up through that publisher to be officially streaming that game you would also gain access to that item. But maybe if you got mean, it through the Google Game Store or whatever. Hey maybe. man, this is their reporting. That's what they said. Yeah yeah it, 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 yeah something like that seems. Because that, that seems like a, right? that seems like an impressive uh, feat as in terms of just raw tech and not necessarily something I I want. <laughs> you know, like I can't, it's a very hard for me to imagine a scenario where somebody would want to play a new game not at the beginning. And you know, it, to like, me, it seems like an old-fashioned idea of a game too. Like, oh, I'll just right. be at that point in Mario. Whereas, like today, it's like stats and items and decisions that were made. Like, is that I'm going to upload all of that saved data? Uh, and then the other one, Jones, is you're streaming a multiplayer game, and you're like, hey guys, if you want to buy this game, it's right on the Google Store, and you can hop in right now with me. And that yeah. one I totally think is going to happen. Yeah. Like, that's, there's, there are mouths watering after what the Apex Legends thing happened, you know? Like, uh, uh... I, like I'm, I'm the thing I don't understand is the commercial play still of why Google is here trying to get into the gaming space, and that's like the closest we get to it. Sure. Oh, well, I mean, and it, and uh, what was it? Somebody remember somebody tweeted out like all of the things that Google has shut down, like like Google Plus, Google well, no, Hangouts yeah. on Air, Google. Uh, it, they had like a list of like six different things. So and ads on YouTube don't pay out like they used to. And so it's like if they sure. have some kind of gamer program that you can sign up for. If you're a streamer, you know, sign up for this and there's a whole other way you can make money. 
it's like they've almost proven <laughs> that like yeah. that you're not going to be making as much money now as you but know, or, it, or in two or three years as you, you know, know it now. could you know if it if it does well even if it does moderately okay it it could bolster their their streaming audience who are we going is this is this safe, dude? no this, uh, is, this smells like a wallpaper for a while oh, okay gotcha, yeah, gotcha. these things are slowly going to roll in it says ink and milk everybody guess the game like chat do you honestly think they're going to show skyrim today no Oh, well, you know. Skyrim will be at the Bethesda E3 conference. <laughs> we got football. That's horror. We got oh, a hockey yeah. mask. Uh, we got, I don't know what this what All this right, research break. back. Okay. Jones will be back. He has to do some last minute research. Yeah, that's yeah. soccer. It is funny that we hockey. associate a hockey mask more with Jason. Oh, you're right. Well, I guess they don't oh, wear golf. masks like okay, that. Okay, so hockey, yeah, golf. Yeah. And then... All right, chat, what's the one game this all correlates to? I, the, so far, the these have all related to one type of game, not a genre. It all means one game. I don't get the shoe. The shoe's not doing it for me. I'm going to say basketball. That's not a basketball shoe, dude. That's low. <laughs> Just like making fun of chat for thinking that all those symbols were definitely Metal Gear. Dreams, that's true. It is, all those have to deal with dreams. Uh, Damiani will be in chat. He's counting our headsets. I think you are going to be right here. Yeah. Okay. Unless you want me to pop back there. That'll be easier. Maybe just have yeah. to tweak anything at the beginning. Um, Come on back, bud. Oh, yeah. But this is big budget, man. Like, you Ooh. talked about those other things. Like, uh, I don't feel like Google Hangouts had a press conference, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's a good point. Like, <laughs> they're, they're teasing us. They're trying to draw us in. They spent a well, lot of money even on this, like, yeah, but think intro about, graphic. But think about this, out. Kyle. With Google Hangouts, you knew people were, you know, like in Gmail and, you know, Docs and any, like, fun tech that's just popped up and, like, ta-da, Google's doing this now. Um, that's a like community focus. So they just, yeah, they, they need businesses to adopt. They want as many people to use it as possible. But this is something where it's just like, it's just come, it's free, come get it. Whereas in this, like, they need, I would imagine that, you know, like uh, the companies that we are seeing there are kind of leading the charge on adopting this technology and working with Google to make this work. So I think, I don't think this is a consumer sell. I think this is an industry sell. Sure. I think they're, I think any any holdouts, oh, yeah. any, I mean, it is any at a people, GDC. Yeah. yeah, and like your any of your like maybe Square Enix or somebody they got on the phone that they're like, nah, we're not really good. We're not. This sounds interesting, but we'll see. We'll you know we'll see what the presentation's like. Basically, I, I gotta say every the phone year, call didn't sell them. <laughs> one thing about GDC is every year I'm like split on this decision of do I show up Tuesday or not? Because I show up Tuesday and I feel like. <laughs> Uh, there's not really anything happening today. Like one the good first thing. Day. Right. Well, yesterday was the first day. Gotcha. Um, but then when I show up Wednesday, I'm like, oh crap, I missed this Google thing. I could have been at this thing. So it's like, right. yeah. <laughs> it's like you never know. I might be your here, blood. Yeah, that's fun. This, today's going to be good. Maybe we score this press conference at the end by the day of the week. Like, was this a Wednesday press conference for you, or was this a Tuesday? Like, <laughs> well, I don't know what it's that was Monday. I don't man. know what its vibes are going to be. Like, it's like a, a, a like an Apple press conference. Those are like very technical and so boring. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be an interesting concept for like a minute and a half, and then there's just a lot of talking. Yeah, I mean that's likely, right? Yeah. Like, uh, Google, I think, understands like corporate press conferences better than the E3. But like E3 press conferences, video game press conferences oh, are their sure. own beast entirely. And so I, I don't I wonder what type of vibe we're about to see for sure. Uh, I will be at the Xbox uh, stream presentation, so curious about that. That's uh That is Thursday. That, and that won't be streamed, right? That's just like everybody I don't know. know. Okay. I don't know about that. Damn it. I haven't seen personally anything about a stream. Do we want subtitles on or no? Someone in chat mentioned that. I'm good with no subtitles. Okay. Live subtitles? Yeah, that's, uh, probably not. Yeah, we don't have those on chat. We're not going to do with that. Um, I don't know if there'll be pie charts chat. I don't know. <laughs> well, we're, we're approaching this kind of like from, you know, the outside going into the company of Google and trying to think of like based on the, the rumors that we've heard and the the be, you know past behavior of this business like Kyle what do you want 
Like, if any company came out in 2019 and said they were doing a new gaming console slash service, like, well, like, was there any any okay. place you would like to see gaming go? So yeah, the sell Jones, the sell for sure is, hey, you can have next gen graphics this year on this Google gaming device. You'll have better. So you'll have stuff oh, that looks yeah. better than an Xbox exactly. One. Like, like just oh. oh, we are starting. And we got an ESRB. Okay. Oh, Pre-show. Pre-show. This music is very hip. Uh -huh. uh, we like to play a game. Oh, that's just a no, no, uh. false alarm. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? Yeah. All right. oh, music again. That ESRB hype. <laughs> ESRB! There will be games. That's what that confirms. <laughs> there will actually be games. Like, to me, this these things actually, like, they indicate, like, an attempt to be like, we know games. This is like Minecraft? Survival. Or we love like, games like you yeah. love games. I don't know about okay. the giant mouse cursor. Yeah. Minesweeper. We love PC <laughs> games. Yeah, it is a cursor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you're saying, like if you could get something that looks better than an Xbox One X and play it seamlessly on your Switch, that would be pretty hype. Cute. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't think it's going to touch the Switch. I don't think whatever Google's showing us is going to touch the so? Switch. You don't think so? Mm-mm. Um, they got YouTube okay. on the Switch now, right? Or has they still not YouTube's happened? YouTube's on the Switch. Okay. Just not Netflix? Yeah, it's so weird. Doesn't make any sense to me. Will, do you have any belief, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Any faith that the Pokemon company could do something <laughs> with this? Oh, like Pokemon Go? Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> it's a rogue company. <laughs> they don't even care. Yeah, like, I do think Pokemon Company. I feel like Sega can be doing something with Google right do now. Do they open with Pikachu? Start this press conference. The first thing. Yeah, to just wow us? <laughs> yeah. Yes. To, to just floor us straight off the Like, top. they just, just show it running, and then, yeah. like, and then they're like, yes, Pokemon will be on whatever this is called. Yeah. Someone got an email from Project Stream to watch the GDC stream. Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, we have seen the logo, too. We didn't even talk about that. Oh. That Google's hanging we, in this we, big we S logo. We saw a messy little line, yeah. Yeah, it looks like an S. It's mm. shaped like an S, but as Blood said, it's a messy little line as well. It looks like edgy, right? It looks like it. it's an attempt at cool. Oh, okay. I actually haven't seen it. Um, I mean, the funny thing is to me, if somebody didn't tell me that was a logo, I don't think I would recognize it as a logo. Uh, <laughs> do you think? Do you think Google could own the, a console called like Stream? Do you think we could try to own the word? No. I mean, okay. they could try. Just like Edge. Right. They're rich, man. That's just a rich company. I don't think sure. they would. Oh, here's our that. Western. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny because, I mean, there's one popular Western video game. I guess that's where people got really excited off the John, did you ever try out that Wild West Online before Red Dead I did, came out? I did not. Okay. I meant to. Was there a bet about this? There's at least two. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yes, there two is. two new games we haven't heard of. Okay. And it wasn't new IP. It was, you're right, new you're games. right. New games. Yeah, new games. Games we did not know existed before today. Yeah. Okay. Call of Juarez Bound in Blood was the second one, right? Dumb. Those aren't popular games. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know if that was the <laughs> second one, though. I think we might have got a two. Devil's Cartel races. was the third. That was a real oh, bad one. Okay. It would chat. It would be very funny if Digimon is a big release Digimon. for this console. <laughs> Wild West Online is dead. Not surprised. Is it real? Oh no. I'm very curious about. Ultimately, after this is over, which will have been the better press conference, this, or Tesla announcing their new model car? They said the audio was loud when you had it. Up. Yeah, so I saw a lot of comments about that. But uh, keep in mind, it's going to change over to mics and speakers. Like speaking on mics, so the oh, audio levels will probably change. All right, change. we'll stay monitoring it for so, sure. So I'll leave it where it is, which is about fifty percent of the way through. Yeah. And if you Code Vein, man, what's up with Code Vein? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, obviously we're gonna see Apex Legends today. This is gonna be running on this. Oh, you know that's not actually bad. Yeah. Bad call. Okay. Or will they not? Will they be like, no? We, we I think I think Apex. I, I think one battle royale, one way or another, both. Apex, PUBG, or Fortnite. Fortnite and Apex Legends will be a part of this press conference. Here's the weird thing, though, is like, for me, talking like if it is a streaming only console, I'm out. Like, when I'm watching Twitch, it buffers. When I'm watching TV shows, it buffers, right? Like, it just still happens. 
If I'm playing a video game, especially a multiplayer game, and it's buffering... The problem is, Kyle, most of us are out already when you're talking yeah. about that. Like, that, this yeah. whole concept, we're out <laughs> until, like, I don't know, the 5G miracle happens or whatever and suddenly boosts everybody's internet speed. Yeah. I can't believe that it would be streaming only, the thing that they're about to show. I don't know, because like, I don't think the tech is there yet. I mean, maybe people at home That's have really what, good internet. Uh, like, clearly, Xbox is already, you know, priming that direction, so it's... It's something that's happening, whether it's good enough for core gamers, you know, probably not yet, but it's, it's happening. And we have the, uh, again, the, going back to the Switch stuff that's in Japan, the Assassin's Creed games and stuff that are on Switch. So it's, it's not like it's unheard of. Uh, oh, and uh, Sony's thing that's been going on for a while. Yeah. PlayStation now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what was, it was called Project Stream last year. Yeah, I mean, like they had, it had, it was functioning for people, but like I, I think you need like that crazy Google internet for it to be like a viable option. Viable for us, but I think for the average person, there's a lot more forgiveness. You know? It's a real laugh. Yeah, it's kind of loud in my headphones too, Odamiani. I mean, it's loud for you. There's too much snare in my headphones. But the, they're like, <laughs> different. Too much cowbell. All right. I mean, I just turned it way down. But, I'm like, turn it back up. Oh, they're one minute late. Uh-oh. That's a good sign. That's that means, a good sign? That means there's some element of danger in what we're about that to see. That means they're waiting on Kobe Bryant. Yeah. That means they're waiting for the internet connection oh, to get enough for the live demonstration. Mm -hmm. I think we'll see Sekiro on this, uh... Sekiro is old already. It's too old? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, then. How Sekiro would be an interesting demonstration, because you can't screw that up. Yeah, like, it's like, like maybe it's too dark. You've got to have, like, frame-perfect timing. From Software will announce their new game during this. Be... But isn't that funny, though? Like, just in, in that, it's like, it's almost like, you're almost comparing games right away. It's like... Sekiro versus Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed, oh yeah, that they could do that. Sekiro, no. <laughs> Amy Hennig's new game would be really cool after all the talk that she did. Like, it'd be cool if, like, Google said, Amy, we'll... Has Amy had enough time to put a game together? We'll buy it. We'll give you millions of dollars. I guess she's had enough time to show something. I don't think so, man. Well, it was like a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Depends on how quickly someone snatched her up. Yeah. You're getting to see your second gaming announce console announcement as Easy Allies? Yeah, like first would be Switch. This one's different, Damiani. Uh oh, oh my goodness. This might yeah. be the one, bud. Yeah, this is it. This is the Google logo coming in. It's getting welded into the shot. Or is this the logo of the thing? No, this is Google. What do you think? Do people love Google? I don't know. <laughs> nah. They're acting like we love them. Yeah. I don't know. I think they're impressive as a company. I mean, but well, now this love is going to be a love YouTube, I guess. I don't think you can love a big company. This better not be the console startup. That was too long. <laughs> Every time you start it up, dude. <laughs> Why are people... All right, here's our teams from the floor. All right, all right. The rock band thing. Good but it goes past. Pop, 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 it goes pop, pop, past pop, pop. when they leave. I bet we see them going through the light. The mushrooms? There they are. Yeah, no, some of the walk on stage. Nothing no. here involves a human being. Yeah, which I find interesting. Chat, it just give it till it transitions. If it's still too loud, I will go. Gather around. So that was the right. I have news. Please welcome to the stage okay, the CEO too loud? of Google, Sundar Pichai. Okay, definitely more of an Apple conference. Oh. The vibe I'm getting already. Look at this. We don't need this yacht. Come on. Stupid Good morning, stone. everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you all for joining us. I suppose I should start out with a confession. I'm actually not a big gamer, uh, <laughs> but I do play FIFA 19 quite a bit. Oh. And really enjoy how He's honest. it is. The, don't lead with that, man. I play Ashes cricket quite a bit. And for those of you it who is are a weird wondering what sentence. cricket is, it's 
kind of like baseball, but that. better. <laughs> Reggie's Another not little known entirely. fact is that Google makes arguably that would be cool. the most I'm not a game gamer, but I am, and then just Reggie the stomps out. Chrome game, mostly played when there's no internet connection. Hey, look. I'm not going to talk to you about the high quality graphics and stuff. So I can expect to play this. You all are it's fake. His, his legs aren't even. But it does what? have a lot of players. Okay, yeah, and I probably logged more hours than I care to admit. While I'm not a big gamer, I do have the privilege of working at a company and leading a company full of people who love to solve hard computer science problems. For many Googlers, their journey with computers Googlers, started with I heard that one. Games have inspired many generations of people to pursue careers in tech. And through that process, they build resourcefulness, creativity, and collaboration, all qualities that are key to solving hard problems. Like just a pile and of And within rocks. Google and Alphabet, know, games play a big part in developing our own technology. The best example I can think of is how we are making HD progress Grout. on AI. DeepMind's AlphaZero uses self-play to learn from scratch. DeepMind. Deep games like chess, shoji, and go. It's an important step towards creating a flexible general purpose system that can learn to solve many foundational problems. More recently, AlphaStar became the first AI to defeat a top professional player at StarCraft II, using a deep neural network Where is this going? from raw game data. Increasingly, games are helping AI to tackle real-world challenges. AI streamers, Even dude? Yeah, man. Mind, <laughs> a great example we have is Waymo. Where we they took our jobs. In games <laughs> like environments, test things that aren't actually possible or safe at scale in the real world. In fact, Waymo has driven more than 5 billion hours in simulations of HK scenarios that vehicles wouldn't normally encounter. And we use it, we learn from it, and actually improve the systems that we'll be deploying in the real world. Perhaps the biggest impact of gaming is how it pushes us to make big leaps Yourself. in computing, <laughs> yeah. networking power, higher fidelity <laughs> graphics, like, and the infrastructure that supports yeah. them. All of you are pushing computing and technology forward, and I find that really exciting. At Google, we've always believed that technology should adapt to people, not the other way around. We've been building towards this vision for some Who'd time. Who'd you pick, Alexius? Who'd you pick? For example, when we launched Chrome uh. a decade ago, <laughs> we imagined, we envisioned that it could be a modern platform for web applications and bring the power of web to everyone, including use cases that seemed impossible at that time, like high quality games. Finally, we are making progress towards that goal. In fact, over the past two years, we've been hard, on work, hard at work on game streaming technology. And last fall, we launched our first public test with Project Stream. As some of you guessed, a technical test wasn't the whole view of our ambition. It was probably the worst kept <laughs> secret in the industry. Internally, we were actually testing our ability to stream high fidelity graphics over a low latency network. We learned that we could bring a AAA game to any device with a Chrome browser and an internet connection. AAA game. Using the best of Google <laughs> to create a powerful game platform. And when we say best of Google, it always starts with our cloud and networking infrastructure. Our custom server hardware and data centers can bring more computing power to more people on planet Earth than anyone else. Today, we are in 19 regions and in over 200 countries and territories connected by hundreds of thousands of miles of fiber optic cable. The best of Google also includes our open <laughs> platforms that allow you to reach billions of people. With Google, your games will be immediately discoverable by over 2 billion people on a Chrome browser, Chromebooks, Chromecast, Pixel devices, so he says, your games, he's talking to developers. Yeah, this is totally a GDC yeah. talk. You're right. That's in addition to all the people playing and watching games across YouTube and Google Play. And when we build these ecosystems, we always take the approach that we only They're succeed on phones. when our partners do. I see a laptop guy. Collectively, our partners he's across typing, web, Google Play, <laughs> yeah, he's YouTube typing. He's not playing have earned more than $110 billion over the past four years alone. And we are committed to this approach 
here. Oh, I got to get in on that 110 billion. <laughs> <laughs> now we have focused on our That's next a big figure, number. <laughs> which is to build a Look game platform for everyone. And when we say for everyone, we really mean it. It's one of our most cherished values as a company. Be it Android, a game or Chrome, platform. or AI. We are dead serious about making technology. Yeah, yeah dead serious. But if you think about games, there are a lot of barriers for users to play high-end games. Beautiful graphics really need high-end consoles or PCs. And games don't have instant access. Think about the way the web works. You can easily share a link, and it works seamlessly. We want games to feel that way, too. Most Instantly time. enjoyable <laughs> with access for everyone. I think we can change the game by bringing together the power and creativity of the entire community. People who love to play games, mm -hmm. people who love to watch games, and people who love to build games. That means all of you. We are really excited to work with you. We want to build a platform. We want you to show us what's possible. And together, I think we can create a new games experience, powered by Best of Google and built for everyone. Let's take a look. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. In the beginning of time, right. games have brought us okay. together. Players and spectators. Yeah. By the handful, the hundreds. It's a dangerous thing to do, make a video like this. We built to what end? Stadiums. To get people just abnormally Places hyped? To gather around every kind of spectacle. Oh, like. Glory, tragedy, pageantry, I'm... community, rivalry. I hate this. <laughs> Wonder. We already Until like video games. City, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who are, who are they convincing the right now? Because this doesn't seem developer focused. This seems of years in, player focused. Our games have changed. This way, this way, this way. But our need to come together remains. This new era of gaming needs a new place to gather. Smite? One place. I think they're already holding the controllers. Can be built. Playgrounds for every imagination. One place where you and everyone you know and everyone they know will all play together. Let's go, let's go, let's I mean, go, let's go, like, let's go, it's ominous, dude. Let's go! Yes! Get him! Boom! Ha! 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 One place that never stops evolving. Where everyone will play. Where did he come from? <laughs> and watch. Yes! High five! Strike! Bam! And create. From any screen, at any time. Oh, there it was. One place. This again. For all the ways we play. That was an ugly controller at first glance. This. We got like. Is Stadia. 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 Gather out. Mm. Gather out. Still don't know what it is. One place, Jones. Native We're Americans all gonna be doing it. We're all gonna be doing it. Oh, everybody. Okay, Welcome see. to Stadia. We are so excited by this. To do this well, it's important that we have the right people working on this, experts with deep history and heritage in games. It starts well. with Phil Harrison, oh. who joined us about a year ago. That's right. He's a great leader and a great gamer. He's definitely someone who knows the difference between RPGs and NPCs. I'm going to pass the mic over oh, to Phil gosh. to show you what we have done. <laughs> Take it away, Phil. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Phil didn't write that one. Phil didn't write it. Thank you, Sundar. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to be here today. And thank you for joining us at GDC as we finally get to share Google. Yeah, Google. Phil Harrison launching a new console. Here we are. Where the worlds of watching and playing games converge into a new <laughs> generation. Phil, you should have come out one minute ago. was built for the 21st century powered by the best of Google. Our vision for Stadia is simple. One place Add around for all the ways we play. It's focused on yeah, gamers, wide. inspired by developers, out. and amplified by YouTube creators. Today, our industry captivates over 2 billion players from all around it's the world. Sharp, though. At it's the center of that anything. community, it's beating oh, like other game fancy. developers. The oh, people there I can in see this the room that create <laughs> yeah. the most incredible game experiences that delight players with engrossing stories, characters, and worlds 
through a dazzling display of technology, artistry, and magic. This guy's been in the biz Games for like 25 years. Games are now the single oh, yeah. biggest form of entertainment on the planet, one that connects a vast community across geographies, cultures, and language. Who did you see as games that are? passionate community, there is a universe of people Yeah, it's so who weird. They're, games, they are, they are taking the absolute maximum games. amount of time Hundreds possible of before they tell us what the hell they're building. Content yeah. Every single day on YouTube. But those two worlds are mostly disconnected, fragmented, and often independent of each other. Yeah. Our vision is to bring those worlds closer together, to connect game developers with players and YouTube creators in a way that only Google can creating a richer and more vibrant gaming community for everyone to enjoy. Through the power of our data centers, the extraordinary reach and community of YouTube, and our investments in the fundamental technologies that are the foundations of the open internet, we offer a truly unique opportunity to combine these worlds. We will be handing that extraordinary power of the data center over to you, the game developers, Cool. where playgrounds for every imagination can be created. Our first public test of this came in October of last year with Project Stream, where we streamed a AAA HD game at up to 1080p and 60 frames per second over the internet from Google Data Did Center. Did Ubisoft to a make, them, make them say AAA? We were humbled by yeah, the this is so positive weird. positive response from players who were able to join us on Project Stream. A huge thank you to those of you who participated in Project Stream and for your vital feedback. And also to the amazing people at Ubisoft for trusting us with the latest incarnation of their incredible game franchise. I just wanna, it's no 4K, but it runs. <laughs> Ubisoft, Ubisoft has always been at the forefront of advancements in the games industry, and they have an incredible track record of success and creativity. And joining us here in the audience today, I'm delighted to welcome the CEO and co-founder of Ubisoft, Eve Gimo, thank you. Ah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Division two, nice. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Senator. I'd like to thank Eve and his team for partnering with us, and to producer Mark Alexi Cote and the entire Ubisoft Quebec studio for their masterpiece creation, Assassin's Creed. Well, I really don't want to see thank a true so triple A action RPG experience. Congratulations for being the first game played by the public on Stadia. As many of you experienced with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we now have the ability to take a sophisticated, graphically intense AAA game and stream <laughs> it to a it's so funny now. on a simple laptop it is, man. without any sacrifice to the quality or vision of the game developer. As successful as Project Stream was, our ambition yeah, is of course far beyond the It's a, a bit of baloney, game. right? A little bit. As we bit. developed our strategy for this new platform, we asked developers how we can help solve some of the most critical challenges you face. There were three very clear themes that resonated. You told us you wanted to unleash your creativity without limits, get to the widest possible scale, and make it easier for people to connect with your games. We used these three themes to anchor our vision and build our platform architecture and began to share it with the leading publishers and developers in the world. Now, let me show you how we have brought this vision to life. Imagine you are watching games on Here YouTube and you discover the latest Assassin's Creed Odyssey trailer on Ubisoft's official channel on YouTube. You will notice the play oh, new now oh, okay. by simply clicking on that button, the player is brought directly into the game in a browser in as quick as five seconds. With no download, With no download, no patch, no update, and no install. Yeah, it's like immediately that's not true. Right. You, we start at a character we didn't make in the middle of the ocean. Right. Right. What, what's going on? I, I'm controlling this? You know what I mean? Like, already disingenuous. So like, yeah. 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 Not a demo. <laughs> Compare that to today, where gamers are all too familiar with things like this. That's what you would be With watching. Stadia, You'd be watching the, the loading screen, like the, the, the intro screen to assess the screen eyes. <laughs> the power of instant access is magical and has already transformed the music and movie industries. And with Stadia, it is now available at the highest level of gaming. But wouldn't it be even more magical if that same game and that same instant experience could be available across any screen type in your life? A key benefit of it's our platform 
is that a single yeah, saying five seconds is so and a risky. single code base can now be enjoyed instantly across any screen. Looks like they're going to demo it soon. At you some demo people out? We'll oh, big oh no. Hey, is this their stream or? Laptops, TV, <laughs> is this part of the joke? And phones. Oh, no. This new generation of gaming oh, is okay, yes. a box. Okay, so that was the Switch With demo. Stadia, okay. the data center is your platform. There is no console that limits the developer's creative ideas and no console that limits where gamers can play. There's a preview. We're about to show this to you now. This is not a concept, it's not a test, this is real. I'd like to bring my friend Khaled to the stage to show you this working. Hello. I mean, he talked about five seconds. I mean, it would be basically so assume that five seconds is that a game that you're already you're playing. It on the you're jumping browser. back into your game. I think they should continue to the, the, like, the start of the game. The Chrome they just cut to something that was more interesting There is basically no hardware acceleration on that laptop whatsoever. And the game is running directly don't. from our data that center. That imager scares me. It's then the easy no. and instantaneous to move that same no. game experience from Looks exactly like that moment onto no. the phone here on a Pixel 3 That's XL. No. That's the same thing uh, Xbox did. Once again, no loss in quality, and we can go straight on to the desktop PC. We actually went to buy the least powerful PC Two, we could find three, here. The least four. powerful um, PC. And we could uh, enjoy well, the same uh, vision that the developer had, the same high quality right 1080p stream at 60 frames per second, Our and the full game vision, that. regardless of the hardware that you're using. And then it's once again seamless to go from running on our uh, PC to running on a tablet. Uh, in this case, once again, uh, running the Chrome uh, OS uh, on a Pixel slate. That's interesting. So it's picking up exactly where the other screen left off. So they're basically doing PlayStation And then finally, big note we then move me. seamlessly to the TV. A big note? And so this I, I TV is accessed I like using the original um, um, I like the 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 Chromecast switch. Ultra HDMI streaming. I do too, but there I think PS4 no did it better. Required to reach Ultra HDMI experience. How? Oh, I think he. I think it's the TV. Smart TV, like the actual TV. Thanks, Khaled. Great presentation. But like, if it only streams in 1080, why bother? Because you're moving, Welcoming Kyle. Any uh, you're moving between, between devices. Where you can try. You can try. Were they saying you're playing you Odyssey all day. <laughs> day. <laughs> and as such, we're also enabling players Chromecast to use Ultra? your existing USB oh. controller. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah. 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 I see an Xbox One controller. Yeah. On a laptop we're good. Or PC. By eliminating that friction, that barrier to entry, we will make it simple and easy. I mean, that only makes sense, especially if you're using a PC. for the first time. But of course, we will have our own controller that has been uniquely designed to enhance the experience for the Stadia player. You're going to have to I'd really like to tell me how it you enhances to the newest member anything. member of the Google hardware family, the Stadia controller. Because that looks like just a controller. What? Yeah, it really does look a lot like a PS4 controller. Like what? This is your gateway to the best of Stadia. Which, if you're going to use other controllers, you probably full should. Stadia I like the gross blue one. And there are many advantages <laughs> to the Stadia controller. And the first is that it will connect you're not through Wi Fi directly to the game that is running in the Google Data Center. What? No the controllers Stadia over Wi Fi. Don't no. do that. Or oh, you want no. To play on and links it with your game session running in the cloud, ensuring the highest possible performance <laughs> and the best experience. I don't see how that's better than going through my PC in on a wired connection. Why are you expect to see on a please. modern game controller? The Stadia controller features two very important new buttons. The <laughs> Box capture button and bubbles. Is for sharing the and saving capture your button is not new. <laughs> the gamer can choose to share their experiences starting with the click of this Having a capture button no, though, it's, it's, to their that's friends it's, it's, or to the world. They now. are in control. Well, Xbox is And the second weird. one is the Google Assistant button. What? Pressing this button allows we will players beat to the game immediately for you. access the controller's built-in microphone so they can get help from the assistant for special nope. in-game features integrated the Konami by code? developers. Yes. Oh, that's so dorky. It's Our goal with Stadia is to help fuel developer creativity at every level. And next, we'll take a look at the incredible... That's got to be like the worst job in this business, being on the other end of that phone. That will further accelerate <laughs> innovation. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like you can, they say you can use any controller. Oh, no, it's like, hey, Google, it's not even a, a person, Jones. It's, hey, Google.
Um, what do you think Konami Code on the Mac controller is just so dumb to me? I wonder oh, if that was just for the presentation. Let's no. look at the real-time computing power we have put into our data centers that will change how we view what a game platform can be. Yeah, we'd just like to see anything but a sense of an amazing right. experience. Yeah, for your well, game, I think they're going to get to that. We needed to bring I think they're computing saving that for their reveals. We've built Stadia's architecture on top of the Google data center network. Do you think it's it'll be available today? Been delivering search results. I don't to your know. No. They'll, they'll like, announce my question is like obviously pricing. The so like, oh, you're yeah, I, I, I'm very, very, very curious about pricing. I think that's going to be a good difference. You presence. just click that button and, and play. It's like for free. Yeah, it didn't ask Google. us to pay. Yeah. We just did it. All connected with our network backbone. Stadia is built on infrastructure that no one else has. More edge nodes mean the compute resources are closer to players, which results in better performance. We took that proven model and infused it with custom designed, purpose built gaming hardware, creating the most powerful and connected gaming platform. Each of Stadia's data center is composed of interconnected kind of racks. Yeah. It's like that edge nodes, bro. Right? Yeah. <laughs> memory and storage. Edge nodes are my jam. Only with Google. Chuck, can I was you telling you about those edge nodes, bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> those RGB <laughs> servers. <laughs> <laughs> this architecture is the foundation for this new generation. What I want to know is, Kyle, you've played Kingdom Hearts 3, right? Yeah. We've been testing Were there any cutscenes in the first hour that looked years. interesting oh, to you? Oh, boy, Jones. For our initial Don't public testing chickens, project stream in 2018, we delivered up to 1080p, oh, 60 frames per second with stereo done. audio. When Stadia launches, we will have increased performance significantly to okay. support All resolutions right. up to 4K, 60 frames 60 per second. Streaming. Okay. Wow. There it is. I don't believe that. I don't With either. They, don't and that. they like barely day. did 1080, you know? And in the future, we'll be able to stream games in up to 8K resolution. Don't applaud. Don't like, he's just saying it. <laughs> you know, there are not that many yeah. homes Woo. or TVs in the world that have 8K today. I was going to say, yeah, yeah like your monitor alone. 8K is inevitable. We have built our platforms as well as the highest performing network. 120 the, the future. It literally says the future. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got in there? After <laughs> today, this will happen. Is that like you're running an SLI with 2080 TIs? Because of what? You get as a player, there Come is on. a second simultaneous stream at 4K 60 frames per second that you can choose to share directly to YouTube from the Stadia data center. So wait, you can play and stream before you no. be saved at the highest That's possible not possible quality. right now. Go away. Stadia is not constrained by the limitation of traditional huh. console no. systems. <laughs> Instead, we have built a truly flexible, scalable, and modern platform that allows us to push performance beyond what was previously considered possible. So say, you know, saying that you're, you're, you could have basically capture that's 4K. The highest possible quality. And thanks to fast sure transfer games. speeds between the stadium how and the data center, how problematic that is right now on the on hardware. To dynamically expand the capabilities along with the need of your games. As a developer, you're used to being forced to tone down your creative ambition that are limited by the hardware. But our vision with Stadia is that the processing resources available will scale up to, ma to match your imagination. For amazing. exclusives, right? In, in, You're not going to add graphics to a PS4 Xbox game is your platform. In 20 years, that only one amazing. console is going to take advantage We've of. We've partnered with our friends at AMD yeah, like to build years, a custom amazing, GPU. But not now. I'd like to personally thank Dr. Lisa Su, AMD President and CEO, who is here with us today. Lisa and her team helped us design a chip to bring you more than 10 teraflops of power, which we've coupled with a custom CPU to make up a single Stadia instance. And here's how the graphical power of Stadia compares to the top two consoles in the market. You can see. <laughs> thank you. That, is, thank that you. is a matter. <laughs> thank you. Yes. They dropped the teraflops. That's how much better <laughs> they dropped the teraflops. You can see that a single Stadia instance is a big step forward. 10.7 teraflops is more powerful than the top two consoles of the previous generation combined. <laughs> so at E3, you're going to see Xbox drop like combined. 15 teraflops. Oh my god. Stadia uh, would be using the Linux operating system. He's combining teraflops. And open I mean... graphics API Vulkan. <laughs> and when it comes to game engines, we are excited to announce 
that we have partnered with Unreal, who will be fully supporting the Stadia platform. We are also partnering with Unity to bring full support for the two most popular and familiar game engines to our development community. And we're empowering developers with an amazing array of familiar middleware that you already use to power your game development, including the most popular physics engine, Havoc. And here's a list of our partners now. And of course, this list will continue to grow over time. With the suite of tools, game development can evolve as quickly as the imagination of content creators. I don't understand what a partnership with Havoc means. We're providing for a multiple platform. ways to make right. games for Stadia. You can develop on our cloud. Well, I mean, they've you know cloud, they're 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 coding desk. to yeah, their to their specs. That, 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 yeah, that's the thing. Really, yeah, yeah. 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 flexible development thing. environment. Like the whole thing about like together. switching Unreal, how those problematic. And that power is of course used to create the best content. Our first guest is from a company known for oh. creating the most sophisticated and impressive gaming yeah, experiences like the... in the industry that always demand the most of every system they run on. We had the chance right, to give our friends at id early access to our mm. tools and technology. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome to the stage executive producer from id, Marty Stratton. Okay. Hi, everyone. You gotta have a sweater. Thanks so much for having us here, Phil and Maj. It's a little chilly in San Francisco. I'm honored to be part of a team at id that has spent more than 25 years on the bleeding edge of technical innovation. When we first met with Google about game streaming, frankly, we were skeptical about how it would work, and in particular, it. how it could work with a game like Doom. This guy related to me However, earlier. we like recognized that. not just your ability and resources to make game streaming a reality, but more importantly, the passion to support a game as fast, fluid, and uncompromising as Doom. After all, if you're going to prove to the world that you can stream games from the cloud, what better proof than Doom? And if Fighting you're going to prove to a developer that you're serious <laughs> about building a robust platform, yeah, multi PC what better pretty quick, team though. than yeah. it, where multi we push player. every platform to its limit? In fact, back in 2016, Doom was the first AAA game released on Vulkan. And because Stadia is built on that same Vulkan API, it didn't take us more than a few weeks to get our upcoming sequel, Doom Eternal, <laughs> looking and playing great on Stadia. Because I don't even like built on the during fun E3 and press conferences. Power, they don't say AAA. Players expect from the series Doom Eternal is yeah, a they pure do. Not often, and yeah. unfiltered action FPS experience. You play as an unstoppable hero sent to destroy Hell's fiercest demons oh. across an expanding yeah, that was, universe that was something. of unbelievable locations. We couldn't be happier no to be bringing Doom Eternal <laughs> to no stadium gameplay. and are thrilled to announce the title that the game will be capable of running at true 4K resolution with HDR color at an unrelenting 60 frames per second. <laughs> unrelenting 60 frames per second. <laughs> PC gamers aren't that impressed by that. Okay. Ooh. They are. It's not easy to do 4K 60. We actually can't wait to show you more of Doom Eternal very soon, in fact. We have the full game running on Stadia, live from Google good. data centers, and you can see it today at our developer session. Oh, you gotta be there. It starts at 12.30 over in West Hall. You won't want to miss it. I, was saying, I thought they were just shadow Thank drop it. Like, we're Google. trying that now. I think it's not ready yet, man. From what they, they showed like th four seconds and looked bad. Thanks so much. They showed like the title screen. That was so Yeah, weird. it wasn't, an, it wasn't. He said himself, if you want to demo Streaming, you show Doom, so and then like they Marty. didn't do it. It's a privilege yeah. to work with Nobody Ian pulled the trigger. Engineers and creators. Yeah. Right. Anyone no, who no, knows no the enemies on screen. You know, it's kind of uh. <laughs> amazingly well on our. Pretty important in Doom. Okay. It was important for us to partner with a developer like it so that VPNs we could prove to get not just to ourselves but to the entire industry that our platform is capable of supporting the most demand. Yeah, the really titles. wide chairs. And. <laughs> Looks Doom happy. will be running on a single Stadia GPU. The fundamental benefit of our cloud-native infrastructure about the is that CPU, developers will be able to take GPU advantage of hardware I and think power it was in, in there. ways never before possible. It. And that I includes taking advantage of the power of multiple GPUs at once. We've asked our friends at UL Benchmarks, makers of 3 Mark, to put Stadia to the test. 
In this video, you can see some comparison okay, yeah. points showing the difference between our single GPU and multiple GPUs. What you see here on the left of the line is running on a single 10.7 teraflop GPU. And on the right of the line, you can see the same content running on Stadia using multiple GPUs. In this demo, we're highlighting real-time fluid deformation. Accurate water simulation is one of the most compute-intensive effects for games. And it's a powerful example of what Stadia is capable of. And I'm so excited to see where game developers go with this kind of performance. When we designed Stadia, our goal was to solve many of the I'll pain points that we've heard about from developers, particularly those related to multiplayer. Especially like the traditional GPUs platforms, do, the like client and server to get their money are connected back? by the unpredictable internet. And therefore, the multiplayer the experience is limited by the client with the slowest or poorest like quality connection. Yeah. But with Stadia, that game client and server both remain on Google's networking backbone, resulting in predictable low latency, reliable connectivity, and data security since no traffic gets exposed to the public internet. Developers okay. who use Google's data centers can create a predictable multiplayer experience that scales to an order of magnitude greater than anything enjoyed by gamers today. What that means is a synchronized state across a very high volume of players, where innovations like distributed physics can be built into your games, where battle royale games could go from <laughs> hundreds of players today to thousands of players tomorrow. And Which yes, really that's a long no game though. And no yeah. hacking. I mean, <laughs> this is gonna get yeah. 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 No, this is gonna get no, 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 right no, there. No, 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 without barriers. <laughs> That sounds like oh, a challenge. <laughs> Why would you do that? Embrace oh no! <laughs> and not even say that. Of course, doesn't he? I don't even need to elaborate. You all know. Also, no cheating. There will be no cheating here. <laughs> Developers will have the ability to enable cross-platform multiplayer for all players, and even okay. bring game saves and progression across as well. Wait, cross-platform as I'd a now like wait. To introduce I'm playing on my phone. You're playing on your TV. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean by cross-platform? I think that's it. Yeah. 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 You're developer. still on Stadia. Please welcome to the stage our lead designer for research and development at Stadia. I don't, I don't consider Hopkins that cross-platform. If I'm playing like Fortnite, yeah. and I see there's one got a Stadia icon, I'm like, nope. You're cheating. Thank you, Phil. One of our team's favorite comments about Project Stream was a tweet that described cool Stadia's technology as the work of wizards. And we are incredibly fortunate to work with wizards every day, bending their magic toward games. I'd like to take you through a few technologies and features that we've been working on that are going to I mean, you can still read that guy's name. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. <laughs> they really want to focus on the text. It's First strange. one is focused on multiplayer. Stadia not only provides high-performing multiplayer experiences from player to player, this but also insane. allows developers to create new, gorgeous gaming environments. Our friends at Tangent Games have been working with us on a technical proof of concept that you can see here behind me. They spent a few short weeks creating Jones, a whatever beautiful this thing is, multiplayer it counts. world. No. <laughs> it does not have a title. It doesn't count. <laughs> this counts. Yes. They, they yeah. Technical demo made in one week. week. This is Brand new game, game announcement. <laughs> Dude, this thing they built in two weeks looks better than Crackdown 3. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Using Google's unique infrastructure, developers can create games built to house hundreds Fair of enough, players, Jones. I mean, low latency, and perfect synchronization. It does look kind of cool in a way. This demo will be available on the show floor if you want to check it out this week. Looks like uh, Jupiter Ascending. As we were building the platform, the game. we collaborated with individual Now we're talking! But we also thought about reference. friends it does game too. development. When we thought about our most treasured gaming memories, something kept coming back, something that we'd lost. When modern games start to push the boundaries of current hardware, rendering two or more scenes simultaneously becomes too resource intensive. And so split screen couch co-op has been fading from gaming. But when all of your clients are in the cloud, couch multiplayer has new life again through Stadia in what we're calling Stream Connect. In the past, the resources required to execute mm. split screen co-op have required developers to sacrifice more of their You're creative goals. You're still gonna need the with Stream bandwidth, Connect, though. We're making it possible to realize split-screen multiplayer without any performance penalty. Unless they Behind combine it, it all into one. Proof of concept that we built at Google. I guess it could work. It's called the Night Forest. 
A co-op demo with names. asymmetric player roles. Is that, that count? There it is. Does this count, Cal? No, like she's like... One hunter on the ground and a supporting area There's like player. no lo loss Set of performance, but like it's clearly game. very stuttery. Each of these well, I mean, maybe that's the animation. It's really demo, like even the walkie animations. But like, what would yeah. happen to squad-based games if developers could allow players to call up the views of their teammates? No, dude, look at that upper left-hand corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's as a receiver for another player's video stream. But I feel like a lot of the stuff they are talking about is stream stuff Connect they keep makes this possible with extreme it's coming down the line. The part of the yes. Developer. I don't feel like a lot of this stuff they're touting is going to be available anytime reach, soon. Even for very small right, teams. all this makes sense in theory. We've shown you three views, but we can keep going. We can keep adding but screens I mean, and shape how they're shown to the player. It does eventually Giving work. a designer not one, but many cameras into a scene. Now imagine, if you could go beyond seeing into players' worlds, what if you could interact with them? Here we have our streams configured into a command center where a fourth player can coordinate the movements what? of our drone, scientist, oh. and hunter characters. Now that coordinator is reaching into the world and placing a beacon to call attention to a particular location. Seen in this guy in the lower right players. is solving the easiest puzzle of all time. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> Google is working to support developers in creating more immersive and creative experiences, whether bringing back effortless couch-based co-op or inventing entirely new multiplayer games. Our next technology demo focuses on the power of the Google Cloud and machine learning and how they can have an impact on accelerating developer creativity. Every developer feels the burn in pre-production to get to a game's magic sooner. We think Google's machine learning technology might have some answers. Yeah, you're right. I, mean, I just feel like I'm being Here lied to, to about it for an hour right now. <laughs> like, it'll happen eventually. Stylish and celebrated independent We'll get games, there, right? Including Deadlight, Rhyme, and The Invisible Hours. Yeah. Yeah, Invisible welcome, Hours. Chairwoman of Tequila Works. Luz Sancho. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and the uh, Groundhog Day. People. Thank you, Aim. I am very oh, excited yeah. to be here for the unveiling of the Stadia platform. There are so many different benefits that the Stadia delivers to all developers, big and small, and particularly for a studio like ours. At Tequila Works, we are very proud of the art styles of our games. It's something we spend a lot of time perfecting. Our development cycles typically last 24 months, and as you can imagine, a large part of that time is dedicated to defining the art style of the game. We are particularly proud Rhyme. of Rhyme, its visual identity created a lasting impression with our players. But it took us a long time to get to that final style. That's why we were so excited to hear from Google about one of the tools they are making available, an amazing tool that will dramatically influence and ease this process. With a style transfer ML, Google is applying the science of machine learning to art visualization. Huh, whoa. Style this stuff I'm into, this is yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Here like developer end using this stuff is really interesting. All of this happens in real time on a Stadia instance. We built this demo to show you what it can yeah, do. Yeah, this was shown in the We start video. with a gray box yeah. world and take any image we want, in this case, Kandinsky's yellow, red, blue, and the model does the rest. Throw it Starry Night, and you have another uh, style. Uh, Give it scratch art, and you get this. Yeah, I've been reading it. We're doing our stuff. part to empower the artist inside of every developer. The R&D team iterated through hundreds of art styles testing this technology. Not that one. And one of our favorites <laughs> came from an old friend. Pac-Man mode? What? No, no, no. no. That's a not plot. Also, I like it. Google We're copyright Sanchez systems now. Partners so far. <laughs> Scanning How to make sure you're not stealing live even oh blocks. Like this textures and blocks. It inspires and empowers our artists to get the visions in their heads into interactive environments in a whole new way. And this is just the beginning. We are using a style transfer in our studio today. And we are blown away by the impact it's having on our latest creations. You will see it. This could really change everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, how are you doing the it's interesting. I don't know how useful it is. Yeah. I wish they would have actually shown that. Thank you, Luke. Uh, it could have been more practical. I think With they were looking transfer, for like dramatic things that yeah. a simple like audience would understand. Quicker. You can check out Style Transfer during the show this week. We can't wait to hear your feedback. Creators inspire us to bring the best of Google to games. And creators are at the heart of Stadia. It isn't just what they create, 
but how those moments are experienced by players, moments that resonate for generations to come. The last feature we want to introduce today is another special experience made possible by the cloud. It's called State Share, and here to talk about it from Q Games is Dylan Cuthbert. Okay. Mm. Representation from Japan. Hey everyone, it's uh, great to be here with all of you today. Uh, as a veteran game developer, I love how creators on YouTube have brought our games to life. But I've always wished those experiences could be more social and like even more fun. And I'm extremely excited by what I've learned from Google about bringing new ways to share a game's replayable moments. With a new technology called State Share, developers can let a player instantly share Boom. a playable moment from a game. This could include the world state, the player's position, so items straight up that carrying, save file. That is so great. developer wants to pack into a shareable moment. The game's state can be encoded into a link that tells Stadia where to pick up the game. This could be sent to one player, or it could be shared with thousands at the same time on YouTube, through email, apps, messaging, or wherever huh. links can go. To me, this totally changes how I think about Wait, the experiences. On Discord, there. That's interesting. I can create moments specifically for this kind of sharing. Challenges to beat my incredible speed runs, or chances for other players to also experience those same like tough boss battles. I can build as many shareable moments as I want, and let the internet turn my whole game into an infinitely replayable treasure hunt. I was so intrigued with the possibilities of uh, yes, state share uh, that I designed shooter, right? a brand new game speed. around it, and it's the biggest title ever. Nice speed run. Right. Right. You're right to call that out. Right Jack. now, it's still under wraps, <laughs> but I can't wait to reveal more about like. this game later this year. Thank you very much. Especially, I think a lot well, of games want to enable lock it out so much. I think a lot of games. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if publishers games. start disabling it, it'll be pointless though. But Thanks, Dylan. Like here's a link to the State end of the game. Is but like, I like this. Stadia is yeah, it's a really powerful developers open. with entirely yeah. new tools that embrace a player's desire to discover, share, and build a community. We're extremely excited by the re reception it's gotten from our early partners so far. And with that, I'd like to introduce the head of gaming at YouTube to tell you what Stadia means for content creators. Please welcome Ryan Wyatt. Oh, secretly hoping Yay, Ryan Wyatt. she was going to say head of gaming of anything other than YouTube. I know, Like man. Sega or <laughs> Konami or something else. At the unveiling of Stadia. <laughs> As you heard, Stadia is about delivering the best developer experience so that the best games can be made. But we're also committed to making sure we have the best creator experience so that the entire community gets stronger together. YouTube is where people come to watch gaming. More than 200 million gamers come to YouTube every single day. I feel like they're more on I wonder if there's going to be any kind of like, they do their best to do like anti-Twitch stuff. And they come because of the gaming creators and viewers who have turned YouTube right. into the gaming platform that it is today. We're always looking for ways to strengthen the connection between creators and viewers, and Stadia is designed to bring them together like never before. Gaming has always been the back of YouTube head since the platform <laughs> first was founded. Look at these guys. <laughs> and one thing YouTube gaming creators want get that kind of is to engage with their fans. That will always be the most important thing to them. That's why over 50 billion hours of gaming content was watched on YouTube last year alone. And to just give you an idea of how much 50 billion hours is, you could walk to Pluto and back. That doesn't give me any time. idea, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that gives me no idea. Yeah, you ever walked to Pluto lately? <laughs> it's time to... Capture ...in creating unique ways to engage with and grow... It's just time that I can watch my lifetime, okay? okay. Distance without, I'd be dead before the playlist ended. That's all I don't want to even get into that. <laughs> and with aspiring creators, we're going to break down the barrier of entry and capturing content by giving you the ability to highlight live stream and capture directly from Stadia. We've already seen the idea of any YouTube link being a direct access point into the game, and that is a huge opportunity for both big and small creators. We're empowering creators to forge deeper connections with their audience, and one of those ways will be to make it easier to actually game with them. Often when you're watching a stream, you find yourself wishing you could be Man, I feel like, uh, uh, in there playing along Kotaku like, saw this presentation on last traditional night. traditional platforms, mm -hmm. you'd have to fire up your console or your PC and just hope that you get matched up with them. However, with this Stadia, is, hey guys, buy the game a new and hop feature in. called Crowdplay, you'll be able to simply click a button displayed right in the stream 
and jump in and play with YouTube creators that you're watching. Well, take a look why at the that video to be behind YouTube me. Creators? It's a live Eight stream of, of NBA 2K. Yeah. The person watching can simply click the link and be placed in the <laughs> lobby for the next game. This is what they chose. All right. If you think about it, crowd play can act like an all-new lobby system for games. Please. And with Stadia, YouTube becomes the ultimate discovery and engagement tool for content. And of course, YouTube creators will have full management capabilities over this feature. To all the game developers, publishers, and the millions of YouTube content creators out there, soon we'll have more information to share on these engagement tools and how we'll be working with you to connect with and build your communities. I'd now like to introduce a friend of mine to the stage. He has over 11 million subscribers on his channel, The Game Theorist, and he and his wife, Stephanie, have often been advocates for the creator community. So we were delighted to talk to him about Stadia and what it means for creators. Please welcome to the stage, my friend, Matt Pat. Iconic jacket. Thanks, Ryan. It's an incredible honor to be here today. Now, for us creators, our audience is our lifeblood. Whether we're breaking down the real life science of the fictional world of Fallout, or diving into the theories behind Bendy and the Ink Machine, or simply streaming gameplay on our live stream channel, GT Live, we're always looking for new ways to connect and engage with our audience. Which is why, when I first met with the Stadia team, I was floored by the impact that it can have for not just gamers, but also creators. Stadia not only empowers me to easily create and share my work. Got to say, I'm pretty impressed by his performance right now. Me to build a <laughs> yeah. stronger bond with my he rehearsed audience. his speech. Crowd play, for example, gives our audiences it's the like chance a Broadway to show with Matt yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then the creator can feature them live on the stream. In like a one-man show. Yeah. Yeah. Another feature that I'm incredibly excited about is... Another feature. Let me tell you about my mom. The possibilities <laughs> are literally... I grew up with the props. <laughs> my streaming horror games, for instance has been one of the most popular formats for live streaming on YouTube since its inception. But now with state share, you can actually take this to the next level by letting the people who are just watching you replicate the exact same scenario you just played through in game. Like that impossible moment when you're out of med kits and you suddenly have a zombie breathing down your neck. Imagine the endless breathing down your neck. Oh. Imagine the endless, <laughs> endless the breathing down your neck. Imagine, just, yeah. endless <laughs> breathing down your neck. Imagine <laughs> the endless breathing down your neck. Imagine the endless Become a game maker yourself. Creating challenges through state share allows us to continue creating content for all your favorite games. I truly wonder how many games will enable game state share. It's like a little created. risky to game design, and honestly. On the other hand, the audience now can reach yeah, super yeah, all the coming in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Really Really helpful for uh, ways. speedrunners, though. But of course, also as a gamer, I'm looking forward to tremendously all the new possibilities of gameplay that Stadia opens up and that can be built only for Stadia. I mean, think about this. No. A thousand player battle royale matches, incredible new graphical possibilities, and of course, all of this is available across any screen. Literally, I could just pick up my phone and start playing exactly where I left off. I feel bad. Laptop, I think they wrote a script for Even him. while sitting in an audience of a keynote like this one. I hope you're not playing right now. <laughs> Lots of exciting stuff happening on stage, but you could do it. Stadia just truly unlocks new opportunities to create, share, and engage across YouTube. I am I feel like he just thrilled about what Stadia brings to the table. He did, How man. it unites technology also, and entertainment in completely well new ways doing. that we have never seen like, before. Not and in ways that can only be possible through the combined power Good the amount of time he's, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Sure. technique. So I thank the training. Stadia team yes. for having me in here today. I can't wait to see what I'd else you have in store. And I'll see the rest of you on the floors of GDC. Thanks, Ryan and Matt Pat. Connecting players and creators to their favorite games is core to our vision. We've shown you how YouTube and Stadia offer the ability for gamers to connect with content yeah, creators. This is like a lot, of, a lot of promises. Just there is another Stadia. I mean, it, 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 there's YouTube that we're the really biggest difficulty with this kind oh, of stuff. Yes. Designers love creating challenge. But as you, games you, reach more and more, you can talk about it all you want, but unless somebody puts in their hand, there's no way to more and more make you believe it. When a player is stuck on a level or puzzle and desperately wants that next piece of story, uh, the breathtaking views in the next level, what do they do? 
Today, they have to leave the game, fire up YouTube, find the right video, scrub to the right part of that video. I love how they just like, it's an like, inconvenience to use our own service YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, like, here go. Go. <laughs> Talk trash this is, this is what it's going to look like. Dynamics with Rise of the Tomb Raider. When it's the like player gets sorcery. stuck on a level, it's beautiful, like actually. Me, <laughs> Instead of grabbing a laptop or a phone, they just need to push the button on Here, the Stadia the controller to get help from the Google Assistant. No distractions, no need to take your eyes off the game, and no secondary devices needed. I can't wait for the compilation of people asking for help and then not understanding. Oh, I bring yeah. up wrong things. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's another deep way in which we're connecting players with the Here's game. Here's how Ben Shapiro won a debate. <laughs> All right. Stadia <laughs> is about removing barriers for players to get to their favorite content and moments. With Stadia, any link can be an access point to the game. So for a developer, the entire internet can become your store. What does that mean? Whether yeah. it's from our Stadia store, text messages, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Discord, because Google the link? search results. I mean, you can already link to a store. Yeah. Email, like, yeah. From the Google Play Store. So where do I install the extension of Chrome, the block? Your games <laughs> yeah. 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 Stadia block. Stadia block. Stadia block. <laughs> Probably the store like tomorrow. Games. Store though does will be home but suggest that's a, not that's a, a viable point. A lot of what they're talking about, Blood, is just kind of like a, an organic integration of things we already have access to. Right. You know, it's like, and I think that's like my main problem. It's like so many times during this presentation, they're like, "Don't you hate?" I'm like, "No, I don't." Right. And they're like, "Oh, thankfully, we're finally solving this problem that we all despise." I'm like, "I've never had an issue with that before. This is cool tech you're talking about, but it's not." I'm not like, "Oh, the Google, thank you." Oh, we are forming. Oh, thank Stadia, finally. Oh. Okay, here we go. Build experiences designed exclusively for Stadia as Google's own first-party game studio. Now I'm like nervous, man. First party games studio. There's no way this is going to work out, right? <laughs> and we've recently been joined by one of the industry's most successful Thanks, executive producers to lead that organization. Uh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the new head of Stadia Games and Entertainment, Jade Raymond. Her shoes. I don't believe we'll have games to show you based off what we've seen so far Thank today. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, everyone. I am so honored to be here at the unveiling of Stadia. In my career, I've been lucky enough to work with some of the most talented and passionate developers in the world. Passion is at the root of all great games, and it's what motivated me to join Google. What I love about games is that we continue to redefine what a game is. When I was 12, I saw the holodeck on an episode of Star Trek. And even though the games I played at the time were side-scrolling, pixel-based kind of games like Mega Man, it was obvious to me that one day, games would take place in fully immersive worlds. Today, you have seen some incredible tech. And hopefully, like me, you now believe that we are on the brink of a huge revolution in gaming, in gaming. <laughs> one that will <laughs> unlock cool new levels. Imagine the endless <laughs> breathing down your neck. The thing is, is like whether no it's their problem or our problem or whatever, it's still the same problem. Now like, that the data center the internet is, not is your platform. For this. Right. That happens while I'm playing a game, I'm so mad. Limitless as well. No, I'm scared. I'm like excited to announce Sony and Microsoft's that press conferences head, are going to be like this. Is that this will shake them up? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're gonna I will like not have only like be this. bringing first party game studios to reimagine the new generation of games, our team will also be working with external developers to make all of the bleeding edge Google technology you have seen here today available to partner studios, big and small. We are committed. Sure to going down the bold path, learning what is working best, and sharing key tools and tech so that we can take games to the next level together. The way I see it, there has never been a more exciting time to be a developer, and Stadia will be a driving force defining the future 
of games and entertainment. Thank you. Yeah, they got nothing to show for like another year. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jade. And it's got to be a reason that rock is on stage. Google. <laughs> it's got to be Which something. Jones are good. Don't pick so many. I think it's just a rock. <laughs> people who play games and the world of people who watch it's going to stand up at some point. One global community powered by the best of Google. We've shared a lot of our icons. I don't today. know there. With Stadia, you'll be able to build your games backed by Google technology like Google Assistant, ML, and TensorFlow. Yeah. What are those? You'll be able to deliver your games no, across the globe like... through Chrome. Yeah, was that through one on the right? Chrome yeah, I don't know. I forget what that one is. You'll be able to Google connect play. with the biggest community totally. of gamers and YouTube content creators. So, how do you get involved? For developers who want to create content for Stadia, we welcome you to go to stadia.dev where you can apply to get access to development tools. If you want to partner with our team at Google, Google to help Plus. bring your no, game to market, we have Stadia Partners, a program designed to give you the resources your team needs to make something great. And for players who want to be the first to learn more, you can go to Stadia.com. I Stadia. get the feeling this is too far out here to start talking about pricing. Well, I think prices, as you just said, Blood, so I think we're just buying games the way we always do. I don't think it's a streaming service at all. Stadia. When? I'm thrilled to announce so that Stadia service. is launching this year, 2019. Okay. Is this a subscription service? I don't know. I think it may be adaptable to either one. We will launch first in the US, like Canada, right the now. UK, and most of Europe. It's been most my privilege today to introduce Stadia. Gaming for everyone. The thousands of Googlers <laughs> who've worked tirelessly to bring this vision to life. This is the first step in the journey. And we'll be connecting with you again in the summer to share more details on the games you'll get to play at launch and beyond. Thank you very much for gathering around with all of us oh, today. With Stadia, we can all dream bigger a little and together something. build a playground of our imagination. Thank you. It does feel like a premature announcement, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I get it. Oh, maybe there's. Oh, no, just a montage. That yeah. was dreadful. Like it wasn't dreadful, but it was long. It wasn't strong enough to prove it. Man, their only onstage really demo was that guy who was just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, would just, he would just like walk around for a second. Like he wouldn't even like fight any, like, oh man. Yeah. And there's just like, see, it works. Just like, huh, huh. it worked clearly. I'm so mad. I'm mad about the Doom demo. Like the, de the Doom was just not good. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It just it it feels like a like an. I'm too, and I found out. Because that's the one thing. That, like it was acknowledged a couple of times. Like, hey, we realize the sound is ridiculous, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to prove it. You have to come out and like so like it's working. Here's yeah. our friend in Minnesota. How are you doing? Are you playing a new game? Like it's and it was still Assassin's Creed Odyssey the whole time. <laughs> right. Yeah, we didn't. We saw some tech demos. We didn't see any new games. We didn't see anything that could really like again. Like Doom could have been a perfect way to show low latency. Show the old Doom. Yeah. Like show show, 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 show somebody with that playing mouse and keyboard, yeah. like tearing it up. Yeah. And yeah, we're not gonna go. We're not gonna go that far. <laughs> they could, I mean, because they, they could even fake that, really, you know, and make that yeah, seem like it works. But I don't think they understand, like, showing Night Force demo and having the frame rate stutter on that. It's like, that's a, that's a, this is the only game you've shown today, <laughs> like, was built with these tools. Yeah, you know? people were saying, like, Kyle, and, like, look how, look how broken our graphics are when we put Pac-Man in it. And it's I like, uh... I saw in chat, just like, Kyle, it's a tech demo, give it a break. Well, it's like, the tech demo should be flawless. Like the Especially tech if it's not yeah. a very fast, if it's a game of literally just elves walking around a forest. Yes, dude. And, and Stadia is like, give me a second. <laughs> you know, it's, like, um, it's a lot of trees here. And there was, a, a, like, if every time I heard the word imagine, it, I, I felt sad, you know, because they were like, they were like, we're building a system where you can do this. And like, wow, cool. And they're like, imagine. You know, like, like, all you're seeing right now is this green circle being dropped in the forest, but imagine. If this actually was something you cared about in a game that you're playing, and you're like, I get, yeah, I yeah. guess I can imagine. And then at the end, they're like, 
developers, go to this website, please work with us. It's like, ah, it's like, imagine if, if people actually went to that website, you know, it's like a little more like, mm -hmm. like Jade Raymond, like imagine if I actually had a new title to announce to you today. You know? like, <laughs> like, every presentation was like that, like, uh, uh, the, the, the safe state thing was cooler than I thought it would be. But again, like so much of this is based on participation. Mm. So like, the, like these these developers have to decide to have their third party games available on Stadia. Like right. YouTube creators have to what, have what to is decide. Revenue share they look have to like? play something like NBA yeah. where it makes sense if players jump in, jump out, jump in, jump out. Um, I mean that's probably the biggest thing that that works for us, especially if it wasn't. If, that, if this was a game we were already playing maybe on PS4 or Xbox or PC, and we were given a code by Google for a multiplayer game like Jackbox or something, or something that like was built to be streamer-focused on Stadia, like, I'd be all over that, sure. I would check that out. Here's the thing, Jones, you wouldn't be, and here's another thing they did not acknowledge the entire time, is the popularity of Twitch. Right. Like they're pretending that like YouTube yeah, streaming no, is like, a popular platform, but like it's, it's not close to where Twitch streaming is. And it was, it's weird it was ignored. Like, us as content creators have uh, no reason to switch to YouTube for those gimmicky features, right? Uh, I don't know if viewers do. I don't know if people at home who are watching Twitch right now are like, man, I would Well, the idea of, of easily joining a queue, I mean, that's right. one of the things that's really difficult to manage sometimes is, is getting players involved or audience involved to, to join your session. I mean, and, you, and you've order. done it. You've made it work with Smash Brothers. Right. But a lot of games are not that easy. Yeah. Because even if I were to take names for people I was going to stream with, like, are they online right now? I don't know. Are they going to be available? How long can they play? Whereas, like, if you join that queue, like, that just, it just you don't takes have care to be of on a friend's list. Because there's so many things they were talking about. They're like, this fixes this problem. That I, I've never had that problem or never had that issue. When I look at the gaming landscape yeah. now, I'm not like, when, oh, when are we going to fix this issue? Whereas that that's, was the one thing in this presentation that did speak to me. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I yeah. imagine as a user, it's kind of fun. Just be like, oh, yeah, cool. I want to join this. And Internet speed and data caps in. in certain parts of the world definitely the biggest barriers to this. It, yeah, they needed to show that working with with well, a, a, a battle royale game instead of with a basketball game. Speaking of Doom, like imagine you're playing, uh, Huber's playing Doom Eternal and every single enemy that comes in is just someone from the community. <laughs> like that's kind of fun. If you're like, they, they, sure. they built the Stadia version of Doom Eternal to work ex specifically with YouTube so that if people were streaming through YouTube, you're just like, I want to go again. And they're just loading up this queue of thousands of people that literally are in the game for five seconds, you know, just run out like as a, a demon. Like that's kind of fun. And it uh, uh, maybe. Let me put it this way. Maybe I'm not so excited about Google being the one like carrying this torch and running it into the gaming future, mm -hmm. but I am excited if Microsoft or Sony is watching this and they're like, ooh. Well, Microsoft, I think, Maybe is we on work the same with Twitch page, and make so. that a functionality. I think or, or Twitch is, is like, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Microsoft is two days away from being this same presentation. Sure. And it would be very interesting to compare what they do. But if this was like a back burner for Twitch and they just move that up to the front, <laughs> they're like, oh, okay. Shots fired by Google. I don't think, like, if you look at the top streamers, the top games that are streamed, I don't think that implementation will be used. You That's know, the I, other thing, too. I think it's too, a cute feature, but, like... Is, yeah, they talk about the infinite, you know, possibilities of gaming, like, everyone's playing every game equally at all times, whereas, like, clearly, it's one specific... And, again, imagine a Battle Royale with a thousand players. Like, cool, who's gonna build it? Like... Yeah. Anybody? You know, on deck to do that? You know, it's just kind of like, right. please fulfill this statement we made on stage. Sure. <laughs> the ball is in your court, developers. Like, well, that's a pretty huge ball you just knocked over there. Like, um, obviously, they would love to do that, but also the more you... But I, I, think that's, I think that's one of the things, too, though, is, you know, Google's put this out there, but, yeah, w w when you get something like Xbox that has established, just bought a bunch of studios has their own server network as well. Like, if Xbox can compete with this and bring it to Windows, it puts Google in a pretty tough spot. The, the, sure. the main advantage that they'll have is the YouTube connectivity, but how much mm -hmm. really will that play into things? And when you talk about, like, crazy graphics, when you're like, man, there's, we can scale up, you know, the, the developers, you're no longer restricted, you can just, the sky's the limit, you can keep going and going. Well, that's, you know, uh, Development time, I'm assuming. You know, it's not just kind of like, oh, we had these pretty graphics ready, but we had to spend more development time not making them as elaborate and gorgeous as we could. And so it's like, are you going to spend that much more development time spending that much more money on your game that is only launching on one console? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, it's or one like, service. Like, so, like, uh, one Stadia box, right? The orange box that gets slammed into the server room. Right. 
uh, is like a high end PC right now. Yeah. But they're like, hey, if you. But use they didn't compare it to a high end PC. They compared it to the to consoles. consoles yeah. right. The outdated consoles are about to get replaced. Uh, yeah, exa- in a year, right. Uh, so, like, let's say you do want to use two as a developer. I wonder if that's an additional cost to you, because it's double the cost for YouTube. Oh, for sure. For Google, excuse me. Yeah. And then that's like, a very good point. They showed like stacking them. It's like, well, like how does how do you pay for this as on the developer side? It's crazy to me. I, I think it does seem early, but I think they wanted to get out ahead of next gen. Yeah. They said new gen, by the way, which I thought was interesting. This new generation of games, like we own it now. <laughs> <laughs> it starts today. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, so I wonder if you know we get that Sony announcement for the PlayStation Five, and they're like, yeah, but Stadia. And we're like, okay, and then it launches and has like four games, you know, on it. And we're like, okay, neat, and then like. You know the next place. To, you know the next Xbox gets announced. They're like, yeah, but Stadia. We're like, yeah, wh- when? Like, Will, when are we going to see this realized? When it well, I mean, in it's, yeah, it's launching this year. Will it have Assassin's Creed? What? Well, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Odyssey clearly, it'll have Assassin's yeah. Creed Odyssey. Do, <laughs> and Doom Eternal. Yeah. Like, cool. <laughs> Probably not playing Doom Eternal mm-hmm. on Stadia. I'll try it out, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess it's really what I'm searching for is like, what does this solve? What, what, I mean, I'm the, one, the, the, the thing Google that it solves software. is, is, you know, pie in the sky, you don't have to buy any kind of machinery other than a TV or a laptop or something right. that you already own. Mm-hmm. So all you have to buy are the games. How you're going to buy the games, I don't know. Will a, a, a uh, like Kyle was saying, will a game that uses multiple servers cost $120? I don't know. Yeah. So... Uh, but it's interesting. I I, I mean I, I yeah interesting. I honestly like I'm I'm not I'm not at all discounting like the the stuff that they're wanting to do. It to me it just feels like the presentation was not strong enough. Yeah, that was a they, they just really like you said they ignored Twitch. They ignored stuff like input lag. You know you can mm-hmm. easily claim that you don't have input lag, but everyone does. They keep doing it, and it keeps having input lag. Every one of these things that tries to stream. Still has lag, so you know you 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 can't really get around that issue too. And and Wi-Fi controller, are you for real? I totally <laughs> forgot the controller's Wi-Fi, dude. That's not a good plan. I can't be more out for this thing. <laughs> I mean, the, I'm they were smart enough to use existing controllers. Right, and right, you can hook yeah. your PS4 or Xbox yeah. One into your PC, and it's gonna work for sure, dude. A Wi-Fi controller, man. They really believe in the in the internet. <laughs> right. They showed Egyptians playing a board game. I just thought that was. I think that might have been the moment where I'm like, no. It was all about concept. It was all yeah. about. And I guess that's GDC, you know. I, mean, I, I guess that it's like what you said. The kind of the, the temperament of it was going to be different. Yeah. This attitude of of no, it, we're all here kind of dreaming. It felt very like San Francisco. Very Silicon Valley, maybe <laughs> like just like sure. just oh man. <gasps> so yeah, what got applause? The uh, the eight K or the four K got applause. The eight K was like, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, I 4K think the four K yeah, was yeah. a surprise, and then the eight K was just like, oh, okay, why? <laughs> <laughs> why? And the, the We're partnering with K yeah. to deliver all Ks, <laughs> and someday sixteen K. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, ah. I think, yeah, I, th- but I keep coming back to those demos. Like, I, like when they're like, yeah, we cooked up this little demo, you know, anyway, moving on, and you're like, what, I, what was the demo for? Was the demo to show us how quickly you built it? Was it to show us how much fun these people are having playing this game? Was it oh, to like show the, us... The city the, the, they were thing, like blowing yeah. up some buildings. Are you showing, I mean, off, I think you showing the, off destruction the, right now? Like, what they were doing... Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, destruction was part of it, but they were showing off trying to like quickly cobble together because they said two weeks well, that's the thing why would we like, cobble that together in even, two weeks even miyamoto's like feature. turret <laughs> nonsense remember like miyamoto's like labyrinth turret game yes. that he played on treehouse for like an hour you know like he I played that for well. an hour and yes. like that was yeah. the, like could we ever play that we could play that that one came with Star Fox. yeah right? okay so like if, if we, we found out kind of what it was for maybe like down the road maybe they weren't sure what they were going to do with it but at least yeah. there's something to talk about you know like and we weren't interested in that at all yeah. <laughs> and he was like really excited about it and like you could kind of see maybe you know like you know the the ideas that he had that led to its creation and maybe where that could go where like just being like so we you build these robots with blue wings and they're blowing up buildings <laughs> anyway and you're like what. <laughs> 
It was so weird having so many people, <laughs> uh, so many important people and so many divisions <laughs> coming together to not solidify anything. You're, Jones, you nailed it. it they, they were demos that looked like no fun. The stupid like sliding puzzle on the bottom of the fairy world. <laughs> yeah, dude? what's like, he doing? I mean, because th that actually does speak to me because back when I was first playing Final Fantasy XI and when I first jumped to World of Warcraft, I had yeah. the idea of like, It'd be really fun to play an MMO where not everyone was, well, yeah, course, was yeah. WASD with movement right and back. mouse with vision. Where like you had some characters that were robots, you had some characters that were drones, you had some characters that didn't even have bodies. They were just coding. You know, like it'd be neat to have uh, an MMO where it's like uh, like one person's playing an RTS, one person's playing a shooter, one person's you know like doing an adventure game and 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 like making yeah. a speech or interrogating somebody. You know, like they're all playing the same game. So I'm like, okay, like. When they're in the forest and it's like, here, this other player is going to have input. Like, okay, cool, but again, it's just like, I don't know, green orb. And it's like, that green orbs are not, not amazing me right now. Because so, it was just such a concept piece. It was just so like... So Chet's really like, they're not happy with how cynical we are about this. They're stating over and over that this is game developers conference. This was a sure. pitch to developers. I kind of get that. And I get that, like, hey, they had to do this live because if it was just to developers exclusively, it would have leaked anyway, right? Uh, maybe. But, like, was a developer salivating at that? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm holding my ground. If it is just for developers, don't show me Egyptians playing on a pool table. Don't yes, or playing exactly, on a board game. Yes. Don't give me a, 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 a tunnels and castles and, and mushrooms and set, you know it's like calm down, Ben. You know, what? like yeah, don't no. don't don't do a don't let us know ahead of time like a week in advance like the future of get like they just. They just blew this up so much. I know they're excited about it. Yeah. And as an investor, like if I'm on the Google board, like I want them to be excited about it. But it's not for sale yet. We don't know how much it is. We don't know what specifically what day it's coming out. Clearly, there's going to be another presentation with more information and stuff. Like in the summer. This should have just told us what it was. This should have literally just come out, spend 30 minutes, and just be like, "This is it. This is our vision for what it is." I, Jones, I feel like part of the length, part of the like parading people out, is to show their dedication to it. Yeah. I think that's part of it. Just like, well, we can't just do 30 minutes. Of course. Like, we'll look like we're not committed. But, like, they look like they're not committed because everything was so half-baked. Yeah, like, Matt Pat comes out and he's like, imagine you can do this. I haven't done anything yet. Yeah. I have nothing to show you. Like, I have not demoed this stuff at all. Um, yeah, and, like, Doom, he was just like, we got the tools and it was really fun. And here's, like, just a, a walkthrough of a level or fly-through. Um, and that had, like, really bad-looking pop-in. Like, I wonder if that was, like, why would they choose that clip? I'm baffled. I'm straight up baffled. Because it's, I mean, I can understand, yeah, like, we are being critical of this, but at the same time, it's like, what are we supposed to say? Like, what are, what are we supposed to just take Google at their word 100% or just be like, cool, see you later? I don't think they want us either to, you know, like, I don't, like, I'm confused at how I'm supposed to react to this, you know, like. Uh, Chad's bringing up a fun example of when uh, Microsoft unveiled the Xbox old OG Xbox with Bill Gates and like how much more of an effort was just like hey we're serious about video games you know as opposed to the first sentence hey I'm oh. not much of a gamer I play yeah. FIFA but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah you know what if you're not much of a gamer don't go on stage <laughs> well, or just don't say that don't like, say that don't, yeah, yeah right. you're the CEO of Google you don't have to prove anything to us just come on out like, but I mean the CEO of Sony doesn't show up right like right that's he, true. he doesn't come to the well, PlayStation content yeah Conference. He did though, at one time. But you're right. Oh, uh, bah. Because even yeah, even pie in the sky. Like, uh, even if this worked on every single level that they promised, like I don't know necessarily how excited I am with nothing specifically Chat, attached you, to it. Can you give us a quick breakdown of what the uh, Digital Foundry thing? Yeah, says? we can't play that on stream, unfortunately. Wasn't that bet though? That's yeah. their content. Oh, yeah. Jones. By like. I like lost that bet twice. I feel like <laughs> when, when they so said when they yeah. said night forest, I was like, Shh, <laughs> don't, don't call it anything. I could not have been more wrong. I had so much higher expectations for that. 1080 60 worked. Did 4K 60 work? The thing that they were promising. <sighs> Can't believe it. Yeah, because people had already seen 1080 60 in the test, right? Right. So. Unrelenting. <laughs> Unrelenting 60 frame per second, yeah. Stadia. They never explained the difference between RPGs and NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look that up on Google. 
NPCs is such a useless term. Why do we have that? I, yeah, it's, my concerns are that aren't just about this. I mean, if the other if the other companies are doing the same thing, if Microsoft, Sony are doing the same thing, like they'll have to address these issues too. But I mean, Google. I would think Google would have the best chance because they their specialty is in the, this this area. This is their area of expertise, like with like an internet ca- connections and stuff like that, and. I just have so many concerns about how all the services are going to... I mean, I'm calling it a service right now because I'm not calling it a console, even though they call it a platform. I I, I just don't believe it's going to work as advertised anytime soon. Right. Um, and if I saw someone mention, oh, the video said, Digital Founder to do said it does do 1080 That's cool. From the Moscone Center in San Francisco, I think. Chat line is doing 1080 Come on, chat. Okay. Wait, is that a bit? Um, no, no. Oh, it's a bit. Digital Foundry. Foundry. Oh, okay. yeah, it's yeah, say, Where like, did Digital Foundry test it? Probably there. Yeah, it looks like they're. Yeah, probably was a session. Probably right ahead of it. Doesn't need. Well, think about culpability, Tommyani. If this launches in like November and it doesn't work for some people, you know, it's not like your my PS4 console is broken, and so I can send that back to the manufacturer. It's like, oh yeah, you just you just got bad internet. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, the you know, Stadia works. It might just be your PC or your internet. You know, it's like, how does this? How how Mm -hmm. you know? How is the 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 issues that this yeah. platform will have ever going to come back to Google? That ties into like the cost. Is do you it buy going? it or do you subscribe to it? Yeah, yeah. it's a, a subscription service that that alleviates some of the concerns. But if it is a uh, you you purchase the games, not only does those issues become more problematic for someone like me, but now that dips into a whole other area of like issues I have about this is like you know content ownership now. This, yeah. the, the, when does how, the game get pulled? How yeah. wide the tentacles of all these aspects of like Google services are like entrenched in this is kind of a little worrisome. Um, I'm really worried about like what they're gonna do with you know their. I mean, they keep advertising like play with other people, play on YouTube, do the streaming stuff. Like their content ID system sucks, and I'm worried that it's gonna like screw a lot of things with that. I'm worried that like games might vanish, and you paid for them. Like, oh no, we're sorry. You need to redefine print. You never owned it. You're just paying. It's a, it is a service. You know, you paid for that game. You paid for like the license for that just to play. Right. I mean, yeah. From like, a legal standpoint, you never yeah. own a game, anyways. But yeah. Yeah, but you always had like the physical copy, and right. like, and let, no one's gonna send out like authorities to track you down and like compel you to return a physical copy if, it, if for whatever reason. It's just. This is the more extreme version of like the all digital future, like consoles. I'm, I'm not as opposed to that on the uh, on the on the current existing consoles. Uh, it, it's like a nice hybrid. You can have physical, you have digital. It's a, it's up to you. It's the best of both worlds. Where this is presenting a one a, a singular option, and I just know Google and YouTube's reputation, and I do not trust it one shred to do the right thing when it comes to this with the, with with, with, uh, with everything they're going to be presenting us and I already forgot the console's name Stadia 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 mm-hmm. jeez it's just a weird name Poke- I just going to remember Pokemon Stadia and I'll never forget it <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah I'm just ter- I, I'm, I'll say I'm like terrified about like what Stadia means for like people who want the value ownership the yeah. value like rights to their content and I'm not like, talking about like the game now, oh, yeah. I when, mean, when game you play preservation. Stuff, who owns yeah. your like now? It's like that's that safe share share state thing. It's like who owns that? Is that you or does now Google have like the right to that? Like you share that like now that now they have the right to your performance and then they have the right to your stream as a content creator. You know, is there gonna be weird divisions between oh your YouTube partner so you get special access and privileges along with Stadia services where you're just a regular you know person who's just like you know you, you got a regular YouTube account. Uh, you're you know you're not as protect I, like the whole thing with like MC and stuff. Um, that mentality is like I'm scared it's going to carry over to this and I yeah I don't have a lot of faith in this um, at the moment. Like they they need to yeah. they need to show more uh, definitely before it comes out. Yeah, I mean uh, going back to yeah the the game preservation thing. I mean anything that is exclusive to Stadia is basically lost to history unless Google holds on to it and is willing to share it, but they're not going to be. That's their their IP. So that's a, that's a weird place to, mm-hmm. to be in for sure. That's nuts. 
not even an indication of what games they're trying, they intend to make. Yeah, I think that's weird. To announce a game studio with no games. Man. Yeah, like, everything everything about this felt like you said earlier, Kyle. You were worried that if they just tried to keep this to behind-closed-doors discussions with developers, because it does appear so early. Yeah. This feels, like, way too early to be talking about this. Mm -hmm. They were just too afraid it was going to leak. Yeah. But at the same and at the same time, as you point out, Jones, they've been hyping this up for the last week. Well, it's like he came. Like, yeah. The, the first presenter, he said, uh, "This is the worst kept secret, you know, in the business." He's like, "I know you know what we're so working on and I, what our plans are." Yeah, I, I feel like yeah. They just named it today. Way basically. too, way too. T the teaser for this made it seem way too hyped up for what it was. I think this was trying to speak to a general audience. I was speaking to everybody. I was speaking like, hey, like for developers, they give you a lot of like broad umbrella terms and buzzwords, and but they give you like, here's the link. Go to stadia.dev to apply and go see our tools and stuff like that. They give a few demonstrations of a few like tools on there, like the uh, the texture ML, the machine learning thing. Yeah. Which I had seen something about that before, which is uh, nice to see. But then like they talked about you, content creators. They just talked about so many different things. It was a lot to process, honestly, and I feel like there's maybe they're still figuring out things. They obviously, oh, yeah. clearly, yeah, like, clearly. And yeah. so I don't know if this was like the right, really the right thing to do at the right time. Yeah, uh, I saw a nice comment in chat that it felt more like it was for suits than developers, even, and that makes sense to me. It felt like it was like a, a CEOs presenting to CEOs. Mm -hmm. It was just so basic. It was it was condescending. I felt like I felt condescended too as well because it was strange. Well, you we were joking earlier about, and I know I'm kind of parroting the same comments over and over, but like uh, you were joking, he's like, "I gotta go to YouTube," you know, <laughs> like YouTube's really cumbersome to use. Like they described this, like he's like, "I just wish this industry was connected." And you're like, "What?" <laughs> like it was just he kept using terms, and I'm like, "I don't, I don't understand this dystopian like gaming landscape that you're describing that Google is coming to save." Seems odd, and that's when people are like. You know, uh, they're like, oh, it's, it's just a presentation. It's like they they made it sound like we are lost at sea without Stadia. That like, this industry is is not growing, <laughs> like facing a, a dark dark future mm -hmm. if we can't you know buy our games through our YouTube window. Yeah, tough tough to like do that off the like crazy success of the PS4 and the Switch, which just are just like doing better than ever, right? Like yeah. hard to like have this presentation after con like. Video game consoles are doing better than ever. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, I get the appeal of wanting to like of a Stadia, a Stadia and its service because people don't want to have to buy expensive PCs to run these games or even have to buy in, like that was the one point I thought they didn't hit hard enough was that they they said like we're running this on a really low end PC and stuff like that like and they were saying you can run on any device but pushing that like it is meant for like any device including like extremely low end so you don't have to spend a lot of money to get in on this service right. that's concerned for everything like a lot of like apps and programs are moving towards that uh, that delivery system so that you don't need hardware anymore you just you know or powerful hardware you just need some device that has an internet connection but it works more for uh, for apps and and software that aren't video game related because uh, because you know, how, like uh, video games are like more intensive. They're gonna use more like bandwidth. Because just like in my mind, when I was watching this, we're talking about like we're gonna have 4K 60 available at launch, one with HDR on top of that. Like when we're s the game still has to send a video signal over the internet. You just have to see what you're seeing, like the the, vi the visuals. We stream to get 1080 60 at the quality that we do the stream it. The over the internet, right like the stream right now, yeah. is at six thousand uh, MPBS right now, and that is up speed. And then like down speed, obviously you can have like way faster than that. But when you start getting like into like two K, four K, and sixty frames and HDR, the amount of bandwidth you are going to need for all that is just. That's why I was like shaking my head, like no. That and then they were saying you can do do two of those at the stream. I was like no, <laughs> like that's not. Oh, yeah, one stream to my TV and one stream to YouTube at the same time. Yeah. Like, well, but I, I think that's because you're not actually you're not actually streaming to YouTube. The server right. is streaming mm -hmm. to YouTube. Right. Right. Yeah, the thing people yeah. are watching isn't coming from your 
hard. Like, yes, you, you, you can stream, for, like someone said, you can stream chat, you can stream 4K from two different services at the same time right now, but, I mean, is it is it a stable, consistent quality, and is it, you know, and we're talking about we need to do 60 frames now, because those videos, those Netflix videos aren't streaming at 60 frames. You, you don't you watch them at tw depending on your region you're 29.94 or 24 frames depending on what you're doing so I, I don't know I, this seems it seems like a pipe dream this year for that like it'll be an option you'll probably click it and it'll probably say like eh, your internet speed is not quite there you could try it but mm -hmm. they'll have disclaimers saying your internet is not high speed enough chat saying that other streams were also having the weird glitches as well oh yeah someone tweeted so out funny. it's like a meme yeah it's mm. so fun. like that's the worst thing that could have happened during the stupid presentation yeah, so it wasn't about us. The it was just, wasn't just us i guess the the dis the different thing and they made a nice little graphic to make that clear is that like uh, they're cutting out what they said like the public facing aspects of the internet so that for for this service alone you're streaming straight to servers without any other uh jumbling around in the in the midst but like i don't know i'm not entirely it. sure it. It. what that's supposed to mean what yeah because i mean isn't any game that you play going directly to their service i mean i guess it's peer-to-peer so I guess if it just you're saying that they're not going to have peer-to-peer -peer connections, that everything would be within the Google network. But it's, it's oh, yeah. yeah, we I haven't even touched on like multiplayer with this stuff. Yeah, that's. I'm curious to see those early videos from people trying out whatever multiplayer game offerings they have, like if, right, like even just like standard stuff. They'll probably have like. Yeah, it won't Fortnite be for people there, who are serious. Or, or Apex Legends, yeah. It'll, I think it'll just never be for people who are like truly serious about like competing. I think this is going to be awesome for like people who just want to play video games on their lunch break. That's the best I can think well, of. Well, if they had a new Battle Royale game in development, they would say we have something in development, more on that later. But the fact you're just like, imagine, yeah. call us, mm -hmm. let's make it together. Some calls them today, oh, and they start I mean, development like, today. That game's two, three years off. Count you know, on like, it, though, right? Count on Fortnite being on this platform. Like, it'll happen. Of course. Yeah. yeah. But that's not what they were talking about. Yeah, true. That's another thing. So someone mentioned, like, you, like for Hard low latency options, there, there are VPN services you can use, but you have to, like, pay for those. I mean, I, I feel like this is supposed to be, the point of this is to not have to utilize that. It's always unfortunate where you, when you have to, Use a VPN for any game service whatsoever. Uh, that that's that that shouldn't be the solution. Why would Fortnite be on the platform? You're so right. I mean, it's already on all the things that that this already touches. Why would any PC game want to be on this thing? Well, I guess not every PC game is also on your phone. But yeah. Oh, the Google Prime V Buck integration and also you know. Yeah, I, I don't see any reason why oh, it wouldn't be more, yeah, platform, more platforms to distribute. I don't I don't own a PS4 or a Switch or an Xbox One and I want to play it on my TV. Yeah. I just get a Chrome and then yeah. I can yeah. play it. I guess that's why. Yeah, yeah. Remember the hiccups in the stream cow where it, it did the deja vu moments? Mm -hmm. Like I'm really worried about that happening in like when playing on Stadia. Yeah. You have like that hiccup in there and you're playing like something and it loops, you know, you have the server lag, and it takes you back, like, a few seconds, and... It's more likely the other way around. Yeah, so, yeah, actually, you, you, like that. You skip ahead, and, like, you just you died. Just yeah. You just skip yeah. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, it accidentally reads, uh... You accidentally, like, click a link to, uh... Uh, share state or whatever, and it totally doesn't bring you to that part. <laughs> it brings you to something else and spoils a game or something for you. Oh, man. Uh, All right, that's what that was. We wa Google. We watched it. You got us to watch. What do we think? I scored that puppy. We're pushing start. Oh, yeah. Skip the cutscene. Uh, I'll give it a one. A what? Yeah, you're not going letter grades. Mm, I'll give it a one. Like, like this makes EA press conferences look so fun. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. This is just a hard one. A one. All yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like for all my complaints with tech. Or just confusion with tech. I think it just comes down to the presentation today, even considering everything that is set up at GDC and, and how to speak to developers in general. I think this was clearly geared, you know, directed at people that weren't uh, weren't going to be at GDC that weren't necessarily excited about um, 
hearing about the future of gaming or are not going to go to stadia.dev and, and check stuff out. Uh, this was a, a D presentation, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm in D. agreement. I think it's D. I think the, 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 the technology definitely has promise and the features have promise, but it's what it is. It's, it's promise, and I think they really needed to show any of this stuff to be really solid, and they they didn't do that at all. And they spent way too much time sort of talking about nothing, sort of talking about, again, talking about gaming in general at the Game Developers Conference. It's like, we, we get it. Like, we, we're going to sit through weeks, a week long of sessions. We don't need you to go into these very basic concepts. Uh, Get get to the point and really you know tell us why this. Chat just said they said games will be announced at E three. Did they say that? They Did said they? we'll talk more about games uh, in okay, the yeah. summer. Got it. Unless unless you got like hard facts on that. Chat. Because that's yeah one of my questions right now is when when do we hear about this again and what form does that take? Is this, did they get their presentation out of the way and so everything else can be like an email updates or yeah? Uh, are they are they is Google going to come back out on stage before the launch of Stadia and talk about Stadia some more? Oh yeah, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, given. for a, yeah, I mean, for a GDC talk, I mean, some of this, you know, probably isn't that that bad. Um, but yeah, if they come to E3, they've got to come with something completely different. Yeah, I wonder if Google will take a Sony slot. Sure. Mon Monday Monday night. Yeah. Did you give it a score, Damian? Um, I'm going below. I'm going below an F. I'm giving it a G. But, G for Google. No, G for get out of here. <laughs> oh, the G for oh get out of here. Stop it. No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, the joke's over. Um, uh, we don't want you rambling. I, it, pretty much my sentiments with Bobo said. They talked a lot. They offered a lot of promises, and I just don't believe them right now. And But I, I do believe that they will at least have one more showing mm -hmm. of Stadia before it, this... It, is unveiled or launches later this year, and uh, yeah, the, I'm. I would like to see stuff actually running on it yeah. in real time, and I think they need to do like a, a trial period. Like Google is known for their betas; everything's in beta oh, forever. Oh gosh! Like they need to do a beta of this. They were so proud. They touted that last year their project uh, stream, whatever it was called for Odyssey. It's Project Stream. Project yeah. Stream. They need to, now that we know what it's for and what it is, they should do another one and not Assassin's Creed, you know, but something we all know, like a, something that's a known quantity, so we can actually see how well it works. Yeah. Um, Doom would be, you know, Doom Eternal would actually be great. Like, hey, play the first level but of I, Doom Eternal. Right, but I think that's the thing is, is Google thought, like, we can just have it come out and say Doom and show, like, a couple of things and then yeah. It's like, if there's a game that you are saying functions on this, a developer relationship that you are building, let's get into it. Like, like show us that game, show it running. Yeah, what is show what does Stadia do for in. Doom? Do we know? Yeah. We don't really. Uh, and I think, going back to what I was saying earlier, I really... I, I think they are now in a position to be upstaged by Microsoft. Microsoft is ready to show what they've been doing. It's very much in the same vein. I'm very curious to see what's going to be. And they have the resources to already have fully functioning games ready to go. You yeah. have a mixer, though. <laughs> yes. Uh, Microsoft isn't perfect, right. but <laughs> they can show this off better. And I think Microsoft like YouTube's no Twitch, but yeah. Mixer's no YouTube. But Microsoft isn't f afraid to say the word Twitch as well. You know, like, they have okay. a mixer, but like sure, they're sure. not afraid to yeah. also put their press conference on Twitch. You know what we'll I mean? See. Like, they'll oh, yeah. still do it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Good point, though, Jones. Like, Mixer will be heavily implemented as well, won't it? They showed one of the uh, server things for Stadia, the red. Yeah, and they showed the controller, and I think they, they said the Chromecast or something. And then there was a box in one of the shots, but they never even said what it was, I thought. It was, like, the red slab for the that said Stadia. On I it. think it was probably just right. another Stadia like server. I think, yeah, yeah. they was server-side still. Yeah, like could, tool. yeah, yeah they didn't yeah. show, like, okay. a little USB drive or anything like that. Oh, no, yeah, the so. TV he was playing on was, like, a Chrome-enabled TV. Yeah. The Chromecast. So he was, yeah. yeah, it was just built into the TV. For 4K60, you need Chromecast. Hmm. Chromecast Ultra. Right. I'm sure there'll be a lot of things you'll need to buy from Google to get, like, the full functionality out of this, so, you know, yep. it costs a lot of money. Did didn't really get into that today. You know? so, <laughs> absurd, man. so absurd. If you care about 4K, like you're getting a console. I, I, like, I don't yeah. see it. I don't see it, man. 
No, I do. I like it. Chromecast sell, right? Like our parents are buying Chromecasts. Like I, it could still work. Isn't? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no you're right, Kyle. Um, Blood, you mentioned the Microsoft thing. Isn't Apple also doing a streaming event? But that's their. That's not streaming games. That's like streaming media service, right? Yeah, right. I'm not sure yeah, about that. Apple. Apple's like Sorry. buying. They're like making TV shows. Soon. Okay, they're, that's how not crazy. The same is that? Thing. Yeah. All right. I was like, this is the month of everyone getting in on streaming and talking about it. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. What? Never mind. What are our next reactions? What's coming up? Uh, some people were asking about Nindies. I don't think we're doing Nindies. I'm not. I have some. I, I won't be able to do it. And Nindies are like. Yeah. I don't know. They're not like. I have a previous. That's a I have a previous They're engagement. not Stadia. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I have yeah. a previous engagement tomorrow morning. So I uh, I, I love watching. Like I'll watch it, but I don't like reacting to the Nindies. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. I we'll, could react we'll to we'll some Nindies. Yeah, because it's like tomorrow. if something doesn't look good, it just feels like bad vibes. Right. Exactly. I don't think Microsoft's yeah. streaming their thing, right? Where are they? Oh, the thing Blood's gonna be at. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I kind of think they aren't, but they could be. I don't think they will, dude. And that, now we know why, right? Like, just like don't don't stream that kind. That's of true. Thing. Yeah. They could have just shown this at <laughs> GDC. It could have right. sounded really impressive from people's notes. Mm -hmm. um, but they wanted to show everyone right now. Those rocks, man. I have dreams about those rocks. Yeah, don't that, worry. We that do. side by side of the water. Uh, or uh, <laughs> the pipe. Oh, that was so weird too. Yeah, again, no one was playing that. It was just some yeah. video that we showed. Again, it's like you click this button and buy it. It's just some mock-up that you did in After Effects. Like, it's like, oh, look at this. You know, here's like didn't really see any kind of store interface. It was just Ooh. so. There's usually a conceptual part to these presentations, but like the entire thing was conceptual, with the exception of the dude walk literally walking cafeteria style through the different. <laughs> you know, that was the only thing that actually happened. Yeah. Everything else was just like squint your eyes and. Imagine. Doodly doo, doodly doo. Later today, we're doing another reaction stream, though. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Way more Tune in 6 p.m. Pacific time Good for a regular group stream. We will be reacting to clips provided by. Is it too late to send in clips? We don't have a cutoff. I mean, it's, it's probably not, but I don't know how it's going to end up. We we're going to have to figure out a filter right. at this right. point. Yeah. I think we're maxed out. We're we will be out on clips. revisiting the, the last three years of Easy Allies and watching videos of stuff that we have done. And laughing at ourselves. You think we're critical of Google and Stadia. Just wait till you see us watch <laughs> the content of Easy Allies. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff we were just making just weeks, months, years ago. Um, but yeah, but that'll be tonight. And uh, it is our anniversary week, so we'll have some fun announcements tonight as well. we got an event coming up this Saturday. That I still get some DMs and emails every now and then. People are like, do I have to get tickets? You get tickets for Saturday at Eventbrite if you want to be there in person. But you can watch on Twitch, 8 p.m. Pacific time. We'll be streaming a fun show. And we'll be streaming for eight hours on Thursday to celebrate our birthday. Our yeah, birthday. We're going to be three years old on Thursday. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. And stuff like this, stuff like us uh, reacting to these things. I, I saw in uh, chat we had some good numbers for today's stream. and um, So it is all because we have a wonderful group of people that watch us, uh, that, uh, that tune in. Hopefully that someday we'll be uh, downloading our save states and uh, uh, buying games through us, through... <laughs> <laughs> various no, services. we actually don't want people buying No, so creator that code? That, what? No. EZA reviews. Wait, what? We could be doing that right now. That's Now's not our something we want to do. No. Blood, imagine, okay? I'm just asking you to imagine this, okay? <laughs> I'm not making any plans here. We're not, I'm not putting my credit card information down. It's I'm just saying imagine a future where people are playing Mother 3 with you, against you, loading green orbs into your Mother 3 safe states. What? <laughs> exactly. See, you're not imagining it, boy. <laughs> you're not with me here. We'll work on blood, and we'll come back the next time we see Stadia. And, uh, and we'll be back later on. Anybody else? Anything? I mean, Saturday's a big show. Saturday's a big show. Yes. I said Saturday. Say, so go get those tickets. Oh, I mean, Saturday like, night. But we're streaming that as well. We're streaming that as well, yeah. Watch that on Twitch. Yeah, easyallies.com if you want to see our schedule in your time zone. And uh, patreon.com slash easyallies if you want to throw some bones. Um, and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you later today.